these techniques because I catch big fish that way. From on the water to in the classroom. We want to use that bait to help make that area even smaller and really, really find that sweet spot. You'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. You want something that's got a nice limber action that's going to allow you to build pressure and keep those hooks pinned against that fish's mouth. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Hold on, because you're going to catch some big <laughs> fish. Information is power in the sport of fishing, so learn from the very best. That's a key theory in all of fishing. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Man, does it trigger a lot of strikes. Here's the part that you're not going to hear anywhere else. This is the Bash University TV exclusive. To me, Simple Jig is the most versatile bait in the tackle box. Don't have a water temperature that controls it. Don't have a time of year. The only thing separating you and a jig and being a great jig fisherman is yourself. How you look at it. How many people here think and have made the comment that, Joe, I just don't think I'm, I'm, I'm fishing my jig right? How many guys ever say, I'm not sure if I, get, I know when I get a bite? You can raise your hand. This ain't an alcohol and almost man. You can raise your hand. <laughs> I've been to them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did take my uncle when I was 10 years old like that. <laughs> you know, the way, the way you jig fish and, and people wondering if I'm getting a bite, we're going to try to clarify some of that today. Throwing a jig is no different than throwing a worm. That's all it is. The best part about a jig is you really ain't got to wait to set the hook. People's like, when you set the hook? When you feel tick, 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 or thunk. He don't have pockets. He don't have a safe deposit box. He don't have armpits. He don't have a catcher's mitt. When your line jumps, there's only one place he's got it. He's either got it sitting on it or he's in his mouth, and both of them are real in the same. Blister him. When you're with a jig, when you feel that initial bite, you ain't got to reel down. You don't have to do all that. You set the hook. When you're jig fishing, and your 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 frame of mind's got to be a little different. It really does. We're going to simplify that. Period. We're going to change it up. I got two rods. I throw it on most time. It's a quantum seven foot four and a seven six. I flip with a seven six medium heavy. I cast my jig most of the time with a seven four medium heavy. That's skipping docks, rocks, anything gets in the way, bicycles, wash machines. It's two rods. The line choice is real simple. If it's super clear and I'm on fish deep, I throw 16 pound sunline shooter. That's for my small jig. If I'm flipping, I'm gonna do 20 or 22 if it's a big jig. But I'm gonna stay somewhere around 18 to 20 pound line always. People sometimes wonder when you're fishing docks and shallow cover, Gerald, can they see the line? No, fluorocarbon does not reflect sunlight. Question is, a gentleman asked me, do I tie a polymer or not on fluorocarbon? Absolutely not. And I will show you guys, I tie a knot, I don't know what you call it. I learned it on the farm hauling hay. We'll call it the double shin dough. I don't know. I double my line, twist it up, run it through the loop, takes about two seconds. I have three tag ends. But what this does is it doubles the line everywhere it touches. So when you pull it down, I have it burn it. I went to the Berkeley plant back years ago when I was with them. They had the guy in the little white trench coat that they do, the little lab. He's got all his machines and he's got all his little knots. And he said, would you like to try your knot against mine? And I'm like, well, absolutely. I'm a redneck. I'm like, sure. It's like tying trucks together. Sure, tie them up. <laughs> so he ties his, and his breaks at like 98.7, 98.8. I tied mine. I broke at 99.4 and 99.5. So I said, you keep working in your lab coat, and I'm going to keep bailing hay. Bait I throw 90% of the time is a 3 8 ounce ball head jig. They'll be made this year by a company called Buckeye out of South Carolina. The jig's going to be called Balling Out. I've had this jig made for about three years by myself. Wasn't for sale, and I have worked on this jig. It ain't something that I said, man, if you put my name on that, you give me $11 a pair of house slippers. No. This is a bait that I went out and built, and I won money with over and over and over, and kind of kept it to myself. Then a company come to me and said, can we make the jig you want? I said, only if you make it exactly like I had it. The Weed Guards Design Pacific sits right down on the hook. Don't have no way to show you that. Let's, God, that guy looks a lot like me. You can see how close the Weed Guard is. See, you don't need a PowerPoint when you got this. That guy's going to lose that fish if he keeps jerking around with him up there. 
You can see that the weed guard is sitting right down on top of the hook. You don't want a weed guard on any jig. I don't care who makes it. If your hook ends here and your weed guard sticks out here like that, you got trouble. You got more trouble than you can reel in. I promise you. The weed guard's not sitting on the hook. Every time you cast it, it's going to go right over a limb. Y'all ever noticed that? How it just fling it just rings that limb, and then no matter how hard you shake it, it don't go anywhere. And the next thing you know, you're throwing an Iconelli fit and ripping all the bushes down off the bank. It's because your weed guard's so high up, it offers that a chance to hook something. You want the weed guard right down on the hook? What a great question. The gentleman's asking when I flip in that area, whether it's a brush pile or a boat dock, do I just fish it back by the target, I think, and then just burn it back in? Or do I make a pitch in there, and I think, man, that's a good looking tree, and I'll fish it out to that tree, and then from there, Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Beck. How you doing, Brian? Are we live? <laughs> We're live. Okay, cool. Well, that's great. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday night. I had to get reminded of what day it was. Uh, I'm Mike Iaconelli, and the um, man of the hour, the dean, is sitting right next to me. Pete, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Mer Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Yes, we have in the booth tonight, we have Brian the Carpenter. Merry Christmas, Brian. Good to see you. Okay, bah humbug. <laughs> Scrooge, as usual. Uh, still don't say anything. All right, cool. Well, we're going to keep going. I don't care what's going on here. We have a great show lined up for you tonight. Uh, Pete, we have a very, very, very special guest joining us live on BU Live via Skype, Jordan Lee. Bassmaster Classic Champion. The, cla the Classic Champ. Big, man. Big, huge. Yeah. I'm, Giant. I, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited. I mean, it's a he's going to be talking about a topic that, you know, needs to be important to every bass angler. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, it's been a factor in so many different wins. Oh, my God. It's caught so many. It catches big fish numbers of fish. Uh, we're, we're talking about jig fishing. Jig fishing. Jig fishing. And, and you know, I mean, uh, dude, is there any other technique? In all of bass fishing, in the history of bass fishing, that's been more important. I, you know, it's got it's got to be up there. You know, it wins. It just wins and wins and wins again, especially in the cold water. Yes, especially. And you guys are coming to a place in March where you, the jig is probably going to be a factor play. again. Jig's going to play. You know, I, I I I try to look at the percentages and look at the the averages and odds, and it seems like to me at the end of the year, I always go back and look, Pete, and I look at the elite events. And it's amazing. There's always two, three, sometimes more of the top 12 that fish the jig in every one of the terms. Wow. You start to get to the smallmouth events, you lose that a little more. But but even in the smallmouth events, classic example, Malax Lake AOI Championship this year won by Keith Combs fishing a, fo fish fishing a football jig. That's right. How about that? Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, if I'm if I'm a guy out there watching this right now tonight and i want to win more tournaments club tournaments regional tournaments bfls federations elites opens flws if i'm a guy that wants to win more tournaments why don't i just put a damn jig in my hand <laughs> the entire time <laughs> you know i think one of the reasons why guys miss it and a lot of people that we talk to and teach around the country you know they struggle with gaining confidence in fishing a jig. Yes. We're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk a lot about confidence. We're going to talk about strike detection. I know that I hear that. that's another thing I hear all the time. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. I'm looking at your messages. Yeah. So, 
I'm reading Pete's text messages. <laughs> the IM board is lit up already, guys. I hope We're Shelly's so- not sending you nude stills, is she? <laughs> I hope she is. I hope she is. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. That may- IM board really be lit up then. <laughs> but uh appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. We had a we had a little bit of a late start tonight. Yeah, but uh appreciate you hanging in there. And, and we're looking forward to this show. It's going to be a great show. Talking about gaining confidence in a jig. Really want to wish everybody, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Yes. I, you know, I hope you got a giant, you know, Tackle Warehouse gift certificate. Whoop, whoop. Uh, <laughs> and all the all the stuff that you wanted for Christmas, the giant swim baits or whatever it may be. I know, um, you know, fishermen across the country, we're seeing it, man. Mm. We're seeing it. The cabin fever, cabin fever. is setting in. And guys are, are getting ready for their season this year. Yes. I'm super excited about it. We've got such an amazing lineup of Bash University seminars coming your way um, to deliver, you know, tools and techniques that are that are truly going to help you move your game to the next level, get you confident uh, in whatever technique it is that you, you're looking to develop this year. Uh, it, it's really exciting time at Bash University, and it's yeah. exciting to see everybody in the whole world right now yes. is starting to starting to come back to fishing after hunting it. season is kind of oh, winding yeah. down. I love it. Football season is kind of winding down. Man, it, it's it's fishing season right now. It is. And let me remind everybody uh, different ways to watch tonight. Uh, of course, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, absolutely free. But we want you to go over, and we want you to go over and watch it, bu.tv backslash live. And if you're a member, Pete, if you're a subscriber to Bash University, you get access to the IM board. And that's cool because you could ask questions, you can comment. But here's a big thing tonight. I wanna I wanna go ahead and say this, Brian, correct me. Click click if I'm saying this right. If you're a subscriber to BUTV and you chime in tonight, we're gonna be having questions, trivia questions, all kinds of stuff. We're gonna be giving away fifteen prize packages tonight. Is that, that correct? Is, that is correct. How about that, Pete? Hey, it's 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 Christmas time here at yes. Bash U TV. Prize packs are amazing. Yes, we've got the brand new Bash University hat. If you subscribe, Hunter's Orange tonight, you get one of these. You get one of these. How about that? You get a Bash University hat. Looks that? like this, or looks like Hand looks like the one I'm wearing. Uh, we got a great WeGo 44. We're giving away 150 dollar prize Wego. pack. Listen, if you if you own a bass boat and you don't have a WeGo in your boat, you got to have one. If you're if you're dead, trolling motor, cranking battery, dude. How many times in the last year has it happened to me? Yep. I fish all day hard. I don't do a lot of moving. I'm in one spot. I go to crank that motor, dead. Kick my Wego out, boom, back to the rent. Weighs a pound and a half. How about that? Fits anywhere in your boat. It will charge your out or will start your outboard. Uh, so it's an amazing tool. Whether you're a tournament angler like Mike, or you're you're a family man, you know when you're out there. Uh, you know how it can be. You're out there, and, and the worst thing always happens, and uh, you want to be able to get back in. So the Wego is definitely something that you want to have. You we're, go, I go, we go. We're giving one away. We're giving one away here tonight. Uh, for one of the callers in or one of the IM questions or one of the trivia guys, we're going to get that. And for all of you uh, Bash U TV subscribers, guess what? We're, we, we're in the giving mood. We're giving away lots of extensions to your excri- subscriptions. We're giving away three-month extensions um uh for your subscription that's going to be some of the prizes that we give away here tonight and uh as well as a bunch of other stuff yeah let me remind everybody joining us tonight i'm so excited i can't even stay in my chair (laughs) bassmaster classic champion current bassmaster classic champion let me let me add that to it jordan lee i know he's been i've been following him on his uh, social feeds pete he's been fishing every day literally i'm jealous uh most of us uh have to do other stuff and jordan gets to fish every day we're going to be talking to him about that, but we're going to be diving into Jordan's brain on jig fishing. And, mm-hmm. of course, let me take you back to uh, about a year ago on Lake Conroe, Jordan Lee changing the history of fishing with a jig, catching all those, most of those big fish on Lake Conroe on a jig. So we're going to be talking to Jordan about mm-hmm. something he knows how to do, bro. I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was a comeback, right? That's, yeah. He's, you know, new the new comeback jig. Uh is what he used to do it. What do you got, Bri? Hey, real quick. Can't hear you. Yeah, you can. No. Really? Uh, maybe. My mic's on. Okay. It's you. Right. Um, question from the IM board. Let's start one off. Did Mike buy and use some of the Medlock double weed guard jigs when he was down in fishing Okeechobee? And do you feel like more of the country should use a jig like that? 
Just right. real quick, let's take one. That's a great question. Yeah, the question was about a Metlock, Metlock, Metlock jig, double guard jig. Uh, and absolutely, uh, the year that Ish Monroe won on Okeechobee, which was maybe three or four years ago, uh, I, I copped some of those jigs. And I think, uh, and I'm going to give you my opinion, for emergent vegetation, Brian DeCarpenter, emergent, emergent. not submergent. Let me, Kissimmee let me, grass. Right. Let me tell you the difference right now. Kissimmee grass, uh, reeds. Uh, uh, mat, uh, matacane, uh, you know, bulrush, all that stuff that's big, emergent, thick, read it, thick, bladed grass. Dude, I think it's amazing, a double guard jig. I think it's fabulous. Something about the way that jig is composed, it helps get through that emergent a lot better. Lily pads? Um, lily pads to a certain extent, like bigger lily pads. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, for submergent grass, what we have a lot of, what we fish a lot of up here. Milfoil, hydrilla, uh, coontail. I do not like it. I, I feel like it gets caught a lot more. It doesn't come through as nice. So I think the Metlock's a great jig under certain situations. Okeechobee, Florida Lakes, Reeds, Matt Bullrush. So I'm headed Absolutely. I'm headed down to Toho. Write this net and write this down. I took this down. Yeah, I would take now, it down. Now what, what what do I need down there for that for that event? I, you know, the, the, the deal, you know, is that, that jig in a half ounce or a three quarter, um, a dark color, you know, a black, a black and blue or a black and June bug, of mm -hmm. course, Florida colors. Something with a, a you know, a, a crawl trailer on the back, a beaver style trailer, and heavy braid. You know, the thing that I, I played with there is did it make a difference? With with a fluorocarbon or heavy mono, and it didn't. And I and you go, fifty pound, sixty five pound braid, Pete. Throw it in there, you know. Do your normal deal. Once it's past the stalk, reel it in and make the next cast. Reel it in, make the next cast. To me, it's not as much as a punching tool. If I'm in that heavy mats of stuff, I still want the one ounce pegged tungsten mm -hmm. worm weight and some kind of creature crawl on the back. But around that emergent grass reeds isolated patches of reed mm -hmm. reed heads dude it's killer and all those years we thought a jig didn't work in florida right it's it's not for true. 20 years they've been it's telling not us true. and here's the here's Leave the your jigs at home here's the great thing and this this will sum up that question the jig in florida to me gets a bigger bite pete all day long mm -hmm. all day long you could throw that worm that senko speed crawl whatever you can throw that same thing by that reed head but most of the time, you don't get that giant, giant bite. You get two to three to occasional four. But, man, that jig, when you get a bite on that jig, dude, yeah. it's the right one. I, I, I smell conspiracy by the Florida anglers. It might be conspiracy. Do you think they were misleading us all that time? I don't know. I was I was made to believe a jig did not work in Florida for a lot of years. Well, I, 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 was it, is it swimming a jig? But you're talking about just making a presentation Dude, this is straight up jig fishing wow this is straight up throw it out let it sink to the bottom hop it a couple times and reel it in and makes the next cast wow this isn't swimming at all awesome it's crazy it's i'm awesome. excited that was a great I, question yeah i can't wait to come down in the fishing florida that was an absolutely great question and uh i guess we need to talk a little bit we talked a little bit about guys uh that are watching on facebook and youtube uh come on over and subscribe to bass university right now and you will be able to get on the im board you'll be able to ask us questions yes you'll be able to win prizes yes you're going to get a brand new bash university hat yes and a holiday gift card just for subscribing and you know it's 14.99 a month it's 150 dollars for the year that's two free months two free months two free months subscribe. it comes to two dollars and 88 cents a Dude, week think about that brian the carpenter it is less than the cost of a crankbait Per week to, per, to to gain all this information. No, uh, half crazy. a, and, half and a crank half, half a size, and, and, and here's what you get. You know, you're you're not getting, uh, you know, who knows what information that's out there running around the Internet. You're getting very, very valuable information from anglers that are on the cutting edge right now that are developing oh, these time. techniques, that are winning with these techniques, and, and they're teaching you all in one place. Um, you know, every... You know, Classic Champs, Angler of the Year, like we're going to have Jordan Lee. Jordan Lee's going to be with us uh, speaking this year. Uh, nice. The nice. best the best of the best teaching about what they're really, really good at. So if you're trying to get confident, if you're trying to catch fish more consistently, or you're trying to become a Bassmaster Classic Champion so you can clip your nose hairs <laughs> on the show, uh, that can all be done through Bass University TV. 
Uh, uh, and, and we also got uh, great other stuff. Hey, we've got 350 seminars. Wow. So it, it, we cover topics from soup to nuts, no matter what your body of water, no matter what style of fishing you like or want to learn about. We've got you covered here on Bash University TV. We've got uh, discounts on products. You you can become part of the Rapala VIP program, get 30%, 30 to 40% off all the Rapala family brands. We've got great discounts with Popticals. Uh, We've got promotions coming with Cash and Rods. Want to welcome Cash and Rods Rods. on board the Bash University family and uh, TH Marine. Um, You know, we've got some great programs. We, We make all these programs available to our subscribers. Uh, so that you can get these great discounts and, and buy all the products that, that you want and use. That's all available for you at Bass University TV. So we want to we want to invite you guys to come over and try it. Check us out. We've got a lot going on. Yes. Pays for itself, Pete. Pays for itself. You get all these VIP promotions, VIP access. Pays for itself, bro. Rapala, all yeah. those companies. It's great. Yeah. It, it absolutely. And we're going to keep delivering. Uh, we've got great classes coming up this year. Maybe we should talk about that a little bit. Let's say, let's give them some info on this because I know a lot of people are watching right now and listening to the program and they're wondering, hey, man, I want to get out to one of the classes. I want to mm. sit in the front row. I want to meet these guys. I want to meet guys like Skeet Reese, Chris Zaldane, Aaron Martins, crazy, top of the guy, top of the list. I want to meet these guys. I want to shake their hand. I want to ask them questions. I want to corner them. They can do it, right? How many seats are open for Kokomo? Kokomo is filling quickly. I yeah. would tell you that. Yeah, we're, we're Kokomo is very, very popular Bash University event. We're filling up quickly. We still got seats, uh, so get them while they're hot. Mark Zona at Kokomo. Mark sure. Mark Zona will be at Kokomo. We've uh, that's going to be our first event. Uh, that's going to be January thirteenth and fourteenth, uh, Kokomo, Indiana. We've got Mike Iconelli is going to be there. What? Z Scott Suggs, FLW champ. JC John Cruz is going to be there um, with us. Bill Lowen, uh, the, the the most consistent limit finder, Mister Twelve Pounds out on the Elite Trail, um, and Cliff Crotchet is going to be there. Mama said, Mama said, Cliff Crochet. So he's a, he's a blast. Uh, come on out to Kokomo. It's a weekend seminar series. We have we give uh, three guys on Saturday and three new pros on Sunday, uh, each giving two seminars a day. You get to interact with them, get autographs, pictures if you want, look into their tackle box, ask them questions. It's the best. A lot of prizes, a lot of fun. It's cold that time of year, especially in that part of the country. So come on out. It's a great way to kick off your fishing season. It's awesome. Uh, So come to Kokomo. We're going to be in Lawrenceburg, uh, southern Indiana, over near Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, That's going to be our first time visiting there, so I'm really excited. To meet the guys there that are in South- Fish Southern Indiana, Joe Thomas, Ohio. the originator of the cock shorts out there. <laughs> Woo! The uh, Northern Kentucky. This is a hotbed for fishing uh, in the country. A lot of passionate anglers that deal with some very, very tough fishing conditions in that part of the country, minus Lake Erie, which is a little bit drive north. We just, we just had an IM come through th- through the uh, BU Live uh, Instagram account. It says, Brian Carpenter, it says, is Joe Thomas related to Jacob Wheeler? I don't know the answer to that one. I thought Are it was his love child. Oh, okay. Love child. <laughs> there you have. Well, we got Odd Defoe, uh, one of our perennial favorites. Uh, you know, super talented angler, accomplishing so much at such a young age. Mike McClellan, veteran, big time tournament winner. Mm. I think he's got eight or nine events it's under amazing. his belt right it's now. It's amazing. Um, Jamie Hardman. Wow. From uh, hot. Talk about hot, bro. Yeah. Hottest what? angler around right now. One of them. What a, be. what a year. Just barely missed that Rookie of the Year title this year and uh, from New York State, so he'll have a lot uh, to give. And Skeet Reese. I'm super wow. excited to have I'm Skeet. Pumped, I'm pumped up about Skeet. Yeah. I mean, having, having Ron there, shoot. Man, I'm, ex- I'm excited. <laughs> Ron? Yep. Let's keep going. Uh... <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> I don't know what Mike's talking about as usual, but. I love having Skeet with us this year, and uh, you know he's been you know classic champ angler of the year. He's done so much in the sport. I'm super excited to have him part of Bash University, as well as the reigning AOY that did it all on YouTube, captured it all somehow. Um, That's crazy. Brandon Polnick. Yeah, Polnick joining us. Yeah, That's he. he awesome. I mean, Brandon was with us like his rookie year. He's been a Bash University instructor for a long time. It's exciting um, to have him back with us. John Murray, a big win on Toledo. 
Uh, what a deal to have him back. Really talented veteran angler. And then and we're going to Tulsa again in Tulsa. January. Love Tul- Tulsa. Yeah. Love Tulsa, man. Tulsa has got... It's the best capital of the world, it, in my opinion. Man, it's it's right there, isn't it? And uh, tremendous lineup. Uh, Jordan Lee, who's going to be here with us in just a few minutes, is going to be there as well as Boom Boom. Uh, had a lot of fun down in Mexico fishing swim baits down there. Yep. James Elam. Uh, Jason Christie, just steady, steady. John Cruz will be there with us again as well. And Jeff Crete is going to be with the Bash the University. The squirrel this year. joining us this year. Yeah, we Very just fun. we just had him on Lake Live. It's looking forward to hearing the seminar. And we're announcing uh, a lot of you. Some of you may not know that we're going to be in Gadsden, Alabama, uh, this year in February. It's uh, it's the first time we've been back to Alabama for a few years. Very we're cool. really looking forward to going back. Uh, clearly, uh, the bass capital of the world, or one of them down there in, in uh, North Central Alabama, and Amart. Is going to be there. Oh, Aaron Martin's joining us. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. Aaron Martin, Justin Lucas, local boy Matt Heron, uh, so steady out on the leads. Uh, Chris Zaldane is going to be there. I'll be speaking down in Alabama. Uh, I'll be talking about my win at Lake Martin like 100 years ago. Yeah, I love it. But um, And one more to be announced. We have some exciting news there. We've got wow. a, a, a one more spot to fill, and we're, we're excited. We'll, we'll let you know that as soon as we get that confirmation in here's the thing i love great lineup here's the thing i love about having aaron martins as a seminar speaker dude you never know where it's going to go like he has his topic and he talks about it Mm -hmm. but the conversation might go into a manny petty that he had a few years ago (laughs) the conversation might get into uh you know like like his feet (laughs) which it all often does it might get into eating healthy I don't know who knows where that conversation is going to go but i'm looking forward to uh to hearing aaron and well, yes, he's got he's got so much knowledge, and he thinks about fishing in a way that a lot of us, um, you know, really don't. I mean, he just has a, a, a unique approach to things. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I'm excited. Let's uh, we're talking about what's going to happen here in the next couple of months. I want to talk about what's going to happen right now, Brian the Carpenter. We've got an awesome guest, and uh, he's been on Ike Live many a times. Really good, good. I'm, I'm glad to call this guy a friend on tour. Uh, we've got the current, Pete, I want to say it again, current Bassmaster Classic champion. Man, that, that's a big thing. Jordan Lee joining us live on BU tonight. Jordan, how you doing? Good, man. Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you, bro. What's happening? Not much. No. Just getting ready for the year. What's, uh, how, how, by the way, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. How was your, how was your Christmas? You know, it was great. I got to, uh, spend been christmas with uh christmas family so uh that that was the first um we've always done it with my family so it was it was good it was good times had a lot of fun that's awesome is there one christmas item you receive that you want to let everybody know about right now something that would shock people i'm not talking about the normal like you know underwear and socks you know people get that well that's normal you know, I didn't really get anything crazy, but if, if people that know me well, I'm a huge Auburn fan. Yes. I, I went to school there. So, uh, Kristen's parents thought it'd be funny to get me a Georgia hat, which we lost in the SEC <laughs> championship. And uh, so I had to wear that, and I had a Georgia stocking, too. So, oh. that was kind of, a, kind of a heartbreaker for me, but... That's pretty funny. Well, Pete, that'd be like giving you a <laughs> Dallas Cowboy hat that on Christmas. Is. It'd be the same thing. That would make me unhappy. <laughs> uh, they must love me or something. <laughs> well, well, that's awesome. Uh, the other thing, I want to catch up with you. It, it seems like me, you've been out in the water every day. Is that true or is that just rumor? That's just rumor. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually going tomorrow, though. It's, it's actually, it's been, I hadn't been in about a week and a half since I've been on Hartwell. I went over there for a few days. Uh, but it looks like we're going to get a lot of cold the next couple of weeks, but I'm still going to go. I'm going to get on Guntersville tomorrow and play around, you know, that, see, that, what, see what it's like. That's awesome. Now, Pete, i gotta, I got to be honest with you. I am jealous of guys that live on or near hotbeds like that, right? Like, yeah. you know, I mean, we, we're okay. We're South Jersey. You know, we got places we could fish, but, you know, dude, it's not Gunnersville. Nah. I mean, they get to go and practice these places like Connersville and Neely Henry yeah, and, and so many great places and they get to do it 12 months a year uh, no, I mean it's no. going to be cold down there for you but but it's it's really cold up here it's cold I know we're really lucky to have a lot of options that's the hardest part it's like 
you know, where do you want to go today? I mean, that, that's the that's the hardest part if, when you want to go fishing is you got so many so many lakes to choose from, so many good places. So, but it, it's fun. It's it's good good place to live. I I want to start the conversation, Pete, about talking about jig fishing, Jordan. I know uh, we've talked many times off camera. It's yep. one of your favorite techniques, and dude, there's a lot of people watching tonight that are like, Jordan Lee's like. 18 years old how the <laughs> hell does he know anything about jig fishing but you've been doing it a really long time let me just start why wh what is it about a jig to you like why why do you love it and why is it so effective you know probably the number one thing is uh you know there's so many baits to choose from now there's always new stuff to that comes out every year and a, a jig is is one of those baits that year round you know no matter winter months um uh, there during the spawn post spawn uh late summer it, it doesn't matter any time of year fish are always going to be you know looking to feed on crawdads bluegill and that's that's really what a, a jig imitates and that's that's why it's a good bait it, it, you can use it so many different ways so versatile um that's why i like it you know i, I there's i have tons of jig boxes i got actually counted tonight since we we're talking about it. i was just looking through my garage and i got close to 10 i have eight to ten plano wow. uh, of jigs. Uh, a football you know football jig swim jig ball head jig rubber jig i mean there's there's so many different kinds and i'm just i'm like a fanatic of them i'm really a hoarder when it comes to jigs but you know they just work they catch big fish there, there, i was gonna say Pete, real quick there's something about a jig about power fishing a jig that to me is like the epitome of, of bass fishing. You know what I mean? Uh, Brian DeCarpenter, I know you're busy back there, but I, wanted, I, w I do want to bring you in on this. I remember the days, Jordan, me and Brian, we're old guys now, but back when we were young, we were probably in our late teens, early 20s. I, mean, I remember like literally learning to fish a jig, and there was something about that bite. You know what I mean? That, that, yep. that thump, and when you jack it, like, that to me is ingrained in my mind. It's part of the reason I love jig fishing so much. You know what I mean, Pete? Am I, I talking a different language? No, man. It's like the to me, it's one of the best moments in fishing when you you flip out or cast or whatever, and you feel that thump, or yeah. you, you but you haven't set the hook yet, right? And you have yep. this moment where you know you're about to jack him, and you don't know if he's two pounds or he's going to yeah. be ten pounds. Yeah. Yep. But you know something big's about to happen. Yeah. Uh, best moment in fishing. I remember my very first jig bite. You do? Yes. You remember your actual first jig bite? Very first one. Okay. It was at the DOD. DOD. And it was an old Corrado. No, it was an old Shimano Bantam. Shimano Bantam. With a push button on the side. Right. And when I went to set the hook, my, my thumb hit that button. And you, and you woofed it. Oh, dude, I blew the reel up. Wow. <laughs> the reel was done for the day. That was my only jig bite. Or my first jig bite. Smoked the reel. Smoked it. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now here's I, this. But is it was a, exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting. And this is a great segue, Jordan. I want to corny on this because Pete and I. This is the number one question we get from guys that don't fish jigs or or new to jig fishing, and it's it's exactly what we're talking. We're talking about that excitement of that bite, and but the question is, and we get it all over the place. A lot of these guys don't jig fish. They don't know when they have a bite. Right, there are a lot of times when it's not an obvious bite. What give give our listeners and viewers tonight that don't normally fish a jig? How, how do you know you've got a bite? What what what's an indicator? How do you know that something has that jig in its mouth? Well, uh, first of all, I I feel like the a uh, uh, one mistake that that anybody can make, and it, even even at our level, um, is washing your line. You know, that's probably. Yeah. The, the biggest thing that I do, I know you do, yep. is watch your line. Um, you always want to make sure that jig's on the bottom. That's that's where that's basically where it needs to be is on the bottom. A unless you know you're throwing a swim jig, most ninety percent of the time I'm fishing jigs on the bottom. So I watch my line when it's on the bottom, and you know that's always a good indicator if the bite is real subtle. If you're fishing it slow, it is watching your line, um, but most of the time, the, the the you know the bites can be really subtle. It, it, if you're fishing deep, if you're fishing shallow, it can be real subtle. And um, you know, having the, just the right setup, having you know, you don't want to be fishing 
um, too heavy of a line or, or too light of a line, you want that good 12 to 17 pounds, what I always generally go with. And, uh, you know, you want a, a, a rod that's not too stiff, but not too limber. You want a, um, around a, a seven foot, seven foot three rod and just the right setup all around is, is definitely key. Yeah, Bright, I'm going to corner you again. There used to be a saying that we developed in the early jig <laughs> fishing days. I love this saying. You love the saying about when something feels off. And that, and that's the way I describe it to yep. people. It's, a lot of times it's not – dude, I've had jig bites that absolutely blow the rod out of your hand, and they're the best. Yep. But if something doesn't feel right, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like It's oh, like yeah. the jig's falling, and it's like falling more than it should be, or just something's queer about the – you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Something's off. Set we the hook. Have, right. We have a saying. You remember the saying, Bry? Set the hook. Oh, oh. Better to appear the fool than be the fool. It's better to appear the fool <laughs> than to be the fool. Set the damn hook! Listen That's to it. me. Set the <laughs> hook, man. That, You're not sure. You, I, you got it. I mean, I, I was just at Lake Hartwell, and I had one. It was real deep. It was probably 25 foot, and um, wasn't really sure. It just felt, like you said, it just it felt weird. Yeah set the hook i mean that's that's all that's what we do i mean you don't always know for sure but if you feel like something's different and it's not hung on something just jerk and you'll be surprised well you know we i'd like to take you back a little bit jordan because i we get this question a lot too is guys don't have confidence in jig fishing they they tie it they make a few casts and and they give up on it or, or they just don't have confidence in it do you remember did you did you just take right to it out of the gate or do you remember how you you got your confidence in fishing a jig that's a great question um you know i, I started off um around you know north alabama and it, it's just uh a, a jig is something I, I remember i had just one dream day with it when I was probably 15 or 16 and and caught this huge limit of spots on on a little finesse jig. And, uh, you know, that's when I really started, started to fish them. And I always consistently got big bites on a jig, no matter where I was fishing. And it it, it was just a fun bite. And that's really what, you know, really what stuck with me about it is, uh, is, is just the, just, just those quality bites that I got with it. Yeah, that, that, that's something, Pete, I hear over and over from guys that fish jigs on the elites, on the FLW, club level guys, local guys. A jig gets bigger bites. Mm-hmm. It always does. And that and it's got to be, you know, I mean, is there a better reason to not? I mean, that's why you should fish a jig, you know? Yeah, and I guess the, I guess the advice is to the, to the beginning angler or, or the beginning jig fisherman is fish it. You fish know, it. keep fishing it until yeah. you have that experience. Because like you just said, Jordan, you're going to have that day where it's life-changing or you're going to get that one big bite and, and it's going to get you addicted to this weapon that, yeah. that and, can do and, so well and for I, you. We keep, we keep picking on Alloway uh, from, from our young days, but I remember my experience with jig and I had that same thing. I, I brought only jigs out there. I would, I would launch the boat at Alloway and I would take every rod out. Forget it, dude. You could smash them with a shaky head. Forget about it. Spinnerbait. Forget about it. You could smash them. I only brought jigs, and I forced myself to learn that. And that's a good, good little mm-hmm. tidbit if you want to learn that technique. Mm-hmm. Let me remind everybody watching and listening tonight: if you've got questions for Jordan, please hit us up on the IM. We're going to be putting all these questions through, and you're going to win some great prizes. Brian well, Carpenter, what do you got? Good. I, I was just going to say, uh, subscribers have the ability to ask questions on the IM right. board. If you're watching us on Facebook, YouTube. Or even on BashU.tv, uh, in order to ask questions on the IM board, you got to be a subscriber. Go over to BashU.tv, subscribe, and you'll have a chance to win all these prizes. Right. And our IM board is lit up, BTC. It's lit up, man. Uh, talk to us. Who? Some questions for Jordan. A uh, ton, ton of questions on jig fishing. Let's rapid fire through them a bit here. Uh, all right, this is a good one. For mop style jigs, is trimming the skirt beneficial, and when would you fish with or without a jig trailer on one? I, jump it forward a little bit because I know we wanted to get heavily into mop fi- mop yeah. jigs yeah. later, but yeah, that's a really good question. Okay, do you ever trim the the skirt on a mop jig? Did you hear that uh, one, Jordan? Yeah, I, yeah, I hear it. Um, you know, I, I really don't. When I'm fishing that style jig, a, a mop mop style jig, I want that that bulk. I want the big profile. I'm I'm not hunting, you know, two pounders 
Um, you know, you can fish tons of different style jigs, uh, silicone skirts, but when you're fishing that round rubber and it's that mop style, I just really like that big profile. And, um, I personally always, uh, fish a jig with a trailer. Um, you know, I have tons of different trailers I fish and we can go through those, but I always fish a jig with a trailer. What, you know, speaking of trailers, when we're talking about this big jig, uh, a lot of times you, you got to have a big trailer, right? Cause that, that, that rubber has got, it's, it's long. I mean, what, what is the trailer that you like to use for that big yeah, jig? I got one right here. I actually brought a few jigs out. Um, but this is, this is my jig and it's got a rage crawl on it. As you can see, you know, you want to, uh, want a trailer that's hangs off, um, further than the rubber, at yeah. least I do. And when, but when this bait's laying on the bottom, this is going to flare out big time, and that trailer is going to stand up. This rubber is going to float up, and it's really going to have a you know big profile. But the, the rage crawl is a good one. Um, I use a space monkey too, it's just a little bit bigger version um, of the rage crawl. But those are my two favorite for sure. I I I, I want to ask you a question on this too, Pete, which is when do you pick a mop over just a regular? silicone profile like that that's a that's a question i even have out there i i you know i, I get out there and i'm 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 always kind of confused on when i should pick a mop jig or when i should pick just a regular football head style with a, a traditional silicone skirt what what's your determiner of that jordan yeah that, that's a really good question i feel like um for whatever reason if on my, my herring lakes i know yeah. it's really popular over there and uh it's something that i've noticed i i don't know if it's just the fish how they act all year or what they eat um but i know it's a dominant bait over there and i know a lot of guys throw it over there but for me um you know when i pick up when i pick up this jig i'm i'm looking for um just the, those big bites and if i'm on a lake let's say um uh, you know like gunnersville and I know there's big ones around, and I'm fishing rock. Um, this is definitely a bait I'm going to try first, and I, I just feel like it gets bigger bites. And you're you're not, you're not going to get as many. I know in the classic, I could have thrown a traditional um, football jig and probably got bites, but um, I felt like that one was just going to give me um, the biggest bites possible. So um, I, I really don't know if there's one determining factor that says, "Hey, throw a mop jig under this conditions." Um, you know, I, I feel like it's a great bait to fish slow. It's not, it's not a bait you're really going to work a lot. So if, if you're fishing, you know, a specific, uh, you know, target fishing slow during the winter time, this is a bait that, that you want to pick up because you don't really want to fish it fast. You know, a lot of jigs, um, football jigs, you know, you're really dragging. This is a bait that you want to fish slow, the slower, the better. Um, the rubber's going to have tons of action, and you really just don't want to overwork it. Catch some giants. No well, doubt yeah, it. and, and uh, you know, I just offer a little piece of advice to add to that is the I think the best time to learn, because it takes a lot of confidence to fish a jig yeah. that's that's this big, you know. I mean, yeah. it's uncomfortable, but it seems like that, that early pre-spawn and definitely in the post-spawn, it just seems like that's when the tournaments are won with that style of jig. Yeah. And if you're going to learn to try it, if you're going to ever get confident in it, yeah. that's probably the best time of year to, to start playing around with that yeah, style. I agree. Brian DeCarpenter, keep, right. keep something coming. What do you yeah, got? let's go here. Uh, best jig for pre-spawn. Best jig for pre-spawn besides the mop jig. Well, we just talked about the mop jig. All right. When should you throw a heavy jig and when should you switch to a light jig? <laughs> That's a good question. A heavy jig versus a light jig. Jordan? Yeah, so uh, my all-around favorite, I really keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, throughout the, the summer months is really when I focus using a heavy jig, a three-quarter ounce, one-ounce jig. Um, when I'm fishing deeper, when the fish are active, uh, I typically usually don't like going heavy if I can, you know, if, if I'm fishing super deep, um, that's when you want to go to a big jig. But 20 foot and under, most of the time, I'm a three eighths to a half ounce. That, those are my two favorite. Yeah. If you don't know what size to throw, uh, get those two sizes. That's the best in my in my opinion. You can do um, pretty much everything with a three eighths or a half ounce jig. 
I'd agree with that. Did, Those are my two favorites. And I, I know you spent a lot of time with Gerald, uh, you know, hanging around him. And he gives a great seminar at Bash University TV yep. about how he fishes a jig. Is he, has he had an influence on your jig fishing? Because I've never heard anybody make it so simple as, as the way he does it. <laughs> Gerald, all he does is, is I got another jig right here. It's a Bach and speak for him. This is the one jig he throws. <laughs> It's a ball head jig. It's his go to. It's a great. Uh, it's a great all round jig. You can do pretty much anything with jig. You can fish it offshore. That's all he does. He either throws a three eighths half or three quarter uh, ball head jig. You know, keep he keeps it ultra simple with with jig fishing, and, and that that jig catches definitely uh, all sizes. I mean, from two pounders to to six pounders. It's it's really a jig that. Um, if you, if you want to get bots, that's, that's definitely a good one, but a ball head jig, that's, that's pretty much, that's all he does. He, he keeps it, like you said, ultra simple. Dude, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. I talked to Gerald, uh, at our opening event last year, which was Cherokee Lake. And you remember everybody there was raving about this new technique called the Mickey rig. Everybody's dropping this little stupid jig head with this little stupid straight tail bait on it. You know, you got to drop it straight down. You watch the fish come to the bait. <laughs> and I, I, Gerald just missed the cut on that one. And he, you know, came in like top 20, just missed making the final day. And I was talking to him a little bit. And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't know about that to Mickey Ray. I'll just do a ball head out there. Dude, he was throwing a damn ball head <laughs> on those same fish and catching them and like casting to them. He didn't care about seeing them on the graph. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that, I think that was a great example, right, of, you know, he keeps it simple. But it's a great example of how effective the jig is, right? Dude, mm -hmm. those yeah. fish are clearly out there. They're bait eaters. But yet the jig was still catching them. And when he got a bite on that ball head, it was a better quality than the guys That's catching them on that stupid the Mickey. Right. It's crazy. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he certainly keeps it simple, and he doesn't listen to the doc talk. I know he talks about that. Um, and a lot of us do. We get frustrated by the doc talk because you know how it is. I mean, they're you know it's the Mickey rig today. It's who knows what tomorrow, and it can lead you astray off the pattern. I noticed that about your fishing, and I'm so impressed with it about you, how you are able to stay cool and level-headed under pressure. Oh, I do that too. In in in, mm -hmm. in in these situations, how do how do you handle doc talk? Do you listen to it? Do you does it even bother you? Do you do you run from it? Or you just let it roll right off your back. You Send them care. over to Matt. It's it's definitely hard not to listen to the dog talk. It always gets in our heads. Um, I don't care who you are. If you hear something, it's it it's gonna it's gonna affect you one way or another. But I, you know, over you know three or four years, I've really tried to you know to eliminate that because I know if I'm going to do good in a tournament, it's gonna it's gonna have to be off something I figure out, no matter what. Um, for, and that's, that's, that's really the best advice for anybody. Um, when you're going to a lake, you, you can figure out something totally different that, it, that I wouldn't do. You know, if we were going to Gunnersville tomorrow and I said, Hey, do this, there's plenty of ways to catch fish. Like, like I just said with Gerald catching them on a jig out, out on the Demiki fish, uh, <laughs> you know. He figured that out, and, and that's something you can do on, you know, any lake, even, you know, that people know really well. You can figure out something totally different and, and do really well and catch a lot of fish. All right, Brian Carter, here's something I want to do real quick. I know you got a ton more questions, but I want to throw it out there to all our viewers and listeners right now, Pete. The first trivia question of the night, uh -oh. and it goes like this. Oh, boy. First one to get it right, Brian Carpenter is going to win this prize. What prize? Uh, we're going to give away one of the missile jig. Yeah, we didn't dis describe Prize it. Packs. Yeah. I'll give you a quick update on that. It, we're going to give away tonight, Pete, we're giving away a prize package of missile jigs that includes a headbanger, a flip out, a mini flip, as well as a bottle of real snot and some jig trailers to go along with that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, some loaded for bass jig trailers. Uh, here's the trivia question for everybody watching and listening tonight. Name the jig that Alton Jones used to win the Hartwell Classic. Name the jig that Alton Jones used to win the Hartwell Classic. Jordan, don't yell. No, no, you can't win. You're ineligible. <laughs> uh, I want to switch real quick, and I want to get to, in my opinion, Pete, this is the second biggest question I get about jigs, and it's jig color. 
It's Jig Color. You're a Jig fanatic. You've got 10 boxes. So do I. Pete's got eight boxes. Brian the Carpenter has seven. We've all got a lot of Jigs. Talk a little bit about Jig Color, though. Do you go crazy? Do you carry 20, 30, 40 colors Jigs? Do you stick to the basics? Talk a little bit about color. Yeah, so uh, I keep it keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, I, I have three main three main colors I use. Um, I like most most all the time um, under you know clear water conditions, even a stain, um, a, a green pumpkin or a natural color, um, whether it's um, a color like this, it's got a little blue, a little orange in it, or, or a green pumpkin with a little blue. Um, most of the time, that's the color I'm going to throw. If it's the water's dirty, I'll go to a, a black and blue. Um, so it's it's pretty simple with me. You know, when I'm throwing a, a rubber, round rubber jig, uh, brown, brown and purple, that's pretty much the, the main two I go with. And so I, I keep it really simple. You don't really need to go too crazy with colors, um, you know, as far as, uh, if you're not sure, go with some kind of green pumpkin shade for the trailers. That's the same thing I do. I throw green pumpkin, green pumpkin blue. And, uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I do. It's more of, it's more important to get the right size jig, I think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and more, more than, uh, more than the color. Now that that's actually just a great segue real quick. Um, do you match the trailer? to trailer color to the jig color or do you try to create a contrast between the two typically i try to match it um i, I don't feel like uh you know when i'm throwing a black and blue jig i'll throw a, maybe a black and blue or a sapphire something like that yep. if the water's real dirty but if it's clear and i'm throwing a you know a natural color jig i'm gonna throw some shade of green pumpkin and and really just do that yeah match it up all right brian the carpenter yeah before before i Pete, Jordan, before you guys belt out the answer, everybody's coming back with uh, Booyah pigskin jig. That's yeah. not the answer that I got. <laughs> Jordan, is that the answer that you got? Uh, is this a trick question? This is a trick question. Oh, I, I don't have it on my uh, pen and pad. That's not the correct answer from what I got. <laughs> All right. Then, then we're not going to go with that because uh, that's not what I got. Either. Let's go with the real answer. Let's be real. This is like live, isn't it? Oh, no, this is be live. This is a different show. Maybe we shouldn't be real here. <laughs> All right, we'll, 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 we'll wait a little bit on that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let, let them keep guessing. See, we're starting controversy here. On, I like on it. On BU Live, we're starting controversy. Are you suggesting, like are you suggesting that Alton won on a jig other – than what hey, was promoted and, bro, I'm just saying and it. written about. Uh, uh, I'm just saying it. TV don't lie, bro. Scotty Sass says the Buckeye Mop Jig. Scotty Sass is our winner. <laughs> Buckeye Mop Jig. It's unanimous. Al Jones. There's your, <laughs> there's your winner. We've just outed you, Alton. And we have a winner at the same time. Scotty, send your we're info not, to me, bro. Uh, truth be told, we're not sure that's true, but that's the answer that we're going that's with. That's the answer we're going with. That's the answer that <laughs> <Yep>. wins. Right? <laughs> this is awesome, isn't it? I love, I love it. Uh, it's too fun. I love it. I, hey, I like that you know Buckeyes getting a shout out because you know what they've won a few tournaments over won the a years. Won a ton of tournaments, of and, course uh, they have. Yeah. You know, unfortunately they didn't get the media attention. Well, maybe they should have. They should. I think they should have. Mm. Big time. Did you know I once won a tournament on a on a mop style jig? The, I, the predecessor to the mop I jig. I do know all about this, and this but is public not, information. I can went ahead and talk about it. Pete Lusick won. Is this this is not one of our trivia questions tonight? Is it? No. Okay. Pete, I know because I've read the best times. I fished in the tournament that you fished in. You won Lake Martin yeah. on a uh, on a mop style jig. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. That was before mops were yeah. popular. Look, so, look Jordan's surprised. Job. He's like, he. I don't. This were is you, public information. We're this not, was I'm it. Not giving any secrets here. How old? There. How old were you in 1999, Jordan? I was eight. Eight years old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> know that i didn't know you won there pete that's awesome yeah thank you Dad. that was that pete, was my first win back in 99 pete, pete won on lake martin with and the, with the mob well it, it was actually an l and m jig l and m l and m which company. was a company i think out of south carolina i'm not sure but when those those jigs came out and they were just big were giant huge. rubber 
I feel like they brown. were even bigger than the mop jigs that are out now. They were, yeah, I think Giant. I think they were. Yeah. And, and the, it was the big flat rubber that yeah. was on the jig that I was using. And, um, you know, it was just amazing. I mean, you could flip a, a different style bait in there, a smaller profile bait, and nothing would happen. But when when you would get her, you know, get that bait in, you'd catch four and five pounders. Crazy. You know, I didn't catch many of them. I just caught yeah. enough, you know, to, well, to get, you, get you get you a couple kickers a day, Keep you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was that was uh, the predecessor. Predecessor. I wonder if the L and M jig is still in man. I would still say. Being I would say right now. now. Uh, Brian Carpenter, you got any, anything coming through that you want to ask? Because I do have another question for Jordan. Yeah, real quick. Uh, Scotty, send your send your info through on the message board. I'll write it down, and I won't put the message through. But send your info to me through the message board here. And I got tons of questions, but go ahead, give me. Oh, a all right, chance get a to couple get ready, up. Brian, because yeah. I, I got another one. Uh, Jordan, talk a little bit. You you breezed over, and I want you to go back. And I know a lot of people watching and listening right now are saying, "Look, man, I need to know. Give me one rod, one reel. You know, g- give me a length and action. Give me a gear ratio, and give me a line size. If you were to pick one." rod reel and line size give it to us for these guys just starting out with jig fishing what, what would you recommend just starting out with jig fishing all around um you can't go wrong with the seven foot medium heavy seven foot to seven two medium heavy um i throw 15 pound cigar um uh, in biz x or um, braze x whatever whatever you prefer 15 to 17 pound um those those two are, are perfect line sizes and a high speed gear ratio seven three to one eight eight one to one um, you know really whatever whatever you prefer on that but that's that's really the uh, the the, def, the the best size uh, that I would I would recommend on all those I totally agree I'd love seven two that's my favorite jig size seven two medium oh, heavy I love it yeah oh, oh, yeah well you know what um, the line size is lighter than I thought you were going to say yeah. You know, uh, that's, I'm surprised you, you – I, I would think 20 pound and up would be the norm. I throw it a lot on 20, but you, you go lighter yeah. than that. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if you're if you're definitely flipping a jig, um, 20 to 25, but if you're really, you know, pitching or casting it, um, or, you know, wintertime fishing, uh, 15, 17 is yeah. what I go with. When you're, when you're up close quarters or you're pitching around docks and stuff, go definitely – upsize uh upsize the line is there a situation jordan you ever use braid and, and what would that situation be you know i really i really don't I, I can't remember the last time i fished a jig with braid um most of the time if i'm i'm fishing braid i'm punching or uh swimming a jig that's definitely why i don't use braid but um for most of the casting jigs i typically don't don't use braid so uh yeah, so swim jig for sure. If you're throwing a heavy jig in grass, definite, uh, definitely use braid. Brian and Carpenter, give us some of those questions coming through. I know there's you got a thousand of them back yeah, there. Yeah, sift through, sift for, through, and give us a couple good ones. Repetitive, Jordan. Let's go back to the classic. How many times did you call that final day of the classic? Um, I think I ended up calling probably two or three times. And that that's like typical you know a jig fishing deal where you're just not getting a ton of bites you don't often get a million bites you don't often get a million bites do you still are you still reliving that every single day do you, do, when you wake up in the morning you still got to pinch yourself i am <laughs> i'm yeah. reliving only catching two fish on that fucking last <laughs> do you, day sorry do you fish slower when when fishing deep or higher pops twitches with the rods when you're fishing deep um, when I'm fishing deep, yeah, I'm definitely going to fish it slower. Um, I, I, I don't like to move the bait a lot, and that's one mistake you can make. Like I said, you always want to make sure your jig's on the bottom, and when you're fishing like 25 plus, you really just want to shake that bait, and really not you're not going to move it very far. If you if you really start hopping it a lot, um, I feel like you know your bites can go away. So when you're when you're when you're going deep, really pay attention to your you know the, the your line and making sure it's always on the bottom and you don't think you you're really moving that jig a lot of times but if you just set it set it in the water and you, you barely move your rod tip that jig's going to move so um i just like to really really fish it kind of slow and, and subtle let me ask you a question um about your hook set because 
as I listen to the different jig gurus that we have, and we, you know, from Gary Klein to JT Kenny to Gerald, um, and, and we're really excited about your seminars this year, uh, everybody's got a different strategy on, on how they're, you know, and once they feel that strike, how they're setting the hook. And I, and I know it, there's a difference between, I guess, maybe a mop style and a flipping hook set. I don't know if there is in your strategy, but what is it? How, how do you do you snap set? Do you sweep set? How do you handle that? You know, hook set something that I've kind of gone through my head. I mean, I, I hadn't really struggled with it, but I'm, I like to swing hard. I mean, there's something about a jig bot. You're, I, when I get that bot, I'm swinging hard. So typically, that's why I usually go up a line size. I go up to 17, so I don't, so I don't break, you know, break off. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm one of those, those guys with the jig. I want to, um, you know set the hook pretty hard and I, I think really the most important thing with the jig is um i'm looking at a couple right now is is really it's not really the hook set more than um the hook you're using and in, in a jig it could be uh, you know if you're losing fish you're having fish pull off um it, a lot of times it, it actually couldn't it, it may not be your hook set it may be um, the hook you're using in a jig it could be too heavy of a wire and that that could be a lot of times the reason you're not getting a hook in them and sometimes you may need to go to a little bit lighter wire and i, I think the hook set is just simply just reeling down making sure a lot of your slacks up and setting the hook rather than um, that's the mistake i make from time to time is set the hook and there's a lot of slack in your line and you know the, the fish can definitely uh get off that way I, I got to tell you real quick. I'm gonna another story. I keep going back to Alloway, Brian. But I, a, a thing I learned about jig fishing, I want to pass on to our listeners and viewers tonight, Pete, is rod positioning for me was so key. And, and, I, and early on, I lost so many bites because my rod was floating in the wrong place. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You'd make a pitch and you'd have your rod too high, or you, or you'd skip under a dock and your rod would be too low, and I'd miss a lot. And one of the things I got to doing, and I do it to this day, 20, 25 years later, I still do it, is I liked for that rod butt on my jig rod to touch my ribs. I, I actually, I, I want the butt of that rod, you know, not digging in, but I like it touching. And, 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 and when that rod butt's in my rib cage, it's right in front of me. That rod's in front of me. That rod's a lot of times at that 2 o'clock position, you mm -hmm. know, right, you know, 2, 3 o'clock position. And, and, dude, I know that it's in the right position. And when I have a good day, when I get off the water that night and I get a shower, you, you can relate to this. I'm sure, Jordan, you can. Dude, when you're in the right position, you take your shirt off to get a shower, dude, you're bruised up. You got those <laughs> marks. Like, you, ever, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Am I the only one that looks yeah. in the mirror at myself naked and sees the red marks on my chest? Am I the only one? It doesn't happen near enough. Okay, but I'm saying I, that's how I know. Like you can see that red mark right at your rib cage. Yep. I'm embarrassed now. Am I the only one that looks at myself naked? <laughs> no, I do, but I don't have bruised ribs. Oh, okay. You, you look at yeah. Mike naked? No, myself. You look at me right. now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. It just, it just got really awkward. Yeah. But. Well, yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> flat rubber and round rubber. Look back to mop jigs. Yeah, flat rubber versus round rubber. That's a good question. Anybody get into all that? I I I'm not that complicated, but Jordan, do you? I, I'm really not that complicated. I, I'm not really a flat rubber guy. Uh, oh, I don't. Really, I don't own any win. flat rubber jigs. I, I have the, this one right here. That's, that's my jig. It's really a small, a smaller rubber, and you can go to actually bigger rubber. This is a, a real thin rubber, and it, it's going to fall a little bit faster. The, the thicker rubber is going to give you a little bit slower fall. Um, but I, I'm not that complicated on the flat rubber. I feel like, like Pete, Pete, the jig he used was probably some flat rubber. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, all, that's all they had back in the 90s. <laughs> I thought you were a lambskin guy, Pete. Uh, uh, but, yeah, that's really all I do, bro. Jordan, by, by the way, real quick, let everybody know, what's the name of that jig? And, and I, I remember you using yep. that. We were at Toledo together when you were helping Strike King concoct that beautiful thing. What's the name of that jig? Yep, it's a J. Lee comeback jig. Um, so the comeback from the classic, you know, is yes. really hard to come up with. <laughs> but, yeah, that's it. it it's a striking jig. And uh, so, yeah, it comes in a couple 
couple of different sizes, and uh, it's pretty cool. Awesome. I love it. Brian? Jordan, what area were you fishing, and what are the coordinates from <laughs> how do you go about – somebody wants you to burn your spot. <laughs> Well, actually, I, I, I got, uh, I was told during, throughout the year at, at a tournament, I forgot where we were, but they said boats were, were on that spot for, for quite a while. Um, don't have the coordinates, but it was, uh, it was by one of the bridges. Don't do it. <laughs> the middle bridge that crosses over, uh, Lake Conroe was just on a little main lake point, which I'm sure every pebble has been turned over since uh -huh. then, but, uh. <laughs> They'll never get there again, but it was good for a couple of days, anyways. It's funny, just as you were as you were telling that, our very own Eric, the intern, is headed there right now, <laughs> and he's sending all the Rowan college fishing team to that spot with his with his GoPro yeah. and his right YouTube. with his GoPro. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm sure they're still there, pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I've got a good question, and I, I want to switch it to um, jig modifications, and you know. A lot of guys will go out and they'll buy a jig and they'll fish it straight out of the pack, just the way it is. Uh, are are there any secret little tricks, Jordan, or, or you know, little modifications, little tricks that you do to a jig out of a pack, whether it's a football head, a flip in a swimming jig? Are, are there a certain certain criteria that you do for modification, or you fish it right out of the pack? You know, probably the the biggest modification. I brought a couple just to just to keep me interested while I'm while I'm talking about jigs for so long. But uh, <laughs> every uh, every jig I think's got a, a different weed guard. You know, that's something that I've really started to pay more attention to. The more more you fish, the more more attention to detail you pay. And uh, the, this this Strike King little finesse jig, this this weed guards, it's really um, it, it's Hold it doesn't have much attention to it. Hold it um, higher. So, you, you can see it. I'm just, I, you just barely press down and it's, um, you know, it, it doesn't have that many strands. Um, this ball head jig, it's got a thicker weed guard and it's, it's a little bit tougher, harder to pull down. Um, so the first thing I want to do, no matter what jig you're buying is look at the weed guard. Um, so I'll, I'll start off by, you know, if it's a really heavy weed guard, I'll definitely take some, uh, take some of the weed guard out and just make it a, a little bit easier when i'm when i'm setting the hook you know i've lost fish over the years by not doing that and i feel like that's probably um probably the the biggest thing that i, I would look at is is your weed guard if it's a thin weed guard i wouldn't necessarily worry about it but if it's a thicker weed guard um i would definitely trim it up a little bit and make sure you don't lose you know lose a fish by just by that simple simple um uh, little modification you can make hey uh brian next question Peter? you pick we're going to give a three-month extension to one of our bash utv wow. subscribers wow brian the car that's a lot of pressure brian the car yeah. uh, well brian parker whether whether you guys like the question or not is going scientific with us moon phase <laughs> is that the question? <laughs> That's a comment. That's not actually a question. That, that was it. Moon, moon phase? Would a, would, yeah. Would a, yeah. It, is that important to you, Jordan? Yeah. The, the, do you pay attention to that in your jig fishing? <laughs> that, does it predict when the crawfish come out and molt? Do they really molt on a full moon? And does that play into you throwing a That's jig? A good, That's actually a great question. It is. That's a great question. Three-month extension. Good. That could be a great question for somebody else. But I've, never, <laughs> I've never got that dialed in yet. I, I'm usually just trying to find a little area where some bass live. I, I don't. <laughs> I, Aaron Martins would be a great guest. <laughs> that question too, because I guarantee you he's got an answer for it. Three hours later, we'd have an answer. Yeah. Uh, well, what, that moon phase question, Pete, just won a three-month extension. That was a great so, question. Uh, uh, send in your info, and you've got that extension. Let me remind everybody, if you're watching tonight via Facebook, via YouTube, head on over to bashu.tv backslash live. And while you're over there, if you want to sign up, subscribe, Pete, right? You're going to get a lot of free stuff, and you're going to have access to – Jordan, questions tonight, all these great prizes and all I that am stuff. Board. Yep. I am bored. You get a Bash University hat. You get yeah. an autographed gift card. All right. And let me, while we're talking about prizes, let me throw this one out there as we wind down with Jordan. Uh, here's the next question. Where did Davey Height, and, and Davey, of course, now is a big MC on, on the mm -hmm. elites. Where did Davey Height win 
on the Buckeye Mop Jake. What lake did Davy Height win with the Buckeye Mop Jake? Is the next question, Brian. First one to get it right wins another one of our Missile Jigs gift pack. And that's got a uh, mini flip, flip out, head banger, and of course some real snot and some uh, loaded for bass trailers. Pete, pretty awesome gift pack. That is no, I remember that tournament. You do remember that. Yeah, do you remember that tournament? I do remember that tournament. How did you do in that tournament? I did really good, but yeah. I was on a different program. Okay. But I did good in that tournament. Yeah. How about rattles? Good question. Who did that question come from? Beer for bait. Beer for bait. Beer for bait, you win something. Rattles, no rattles, Jordan. Great question. Um, I feel like rattles for me uh, when the water's super muddy. The tournament this year at Lake Dardanelle uh, had a pretty tough tournament. The, the third day I caught them really good with a, a jig. I was uh, had had rattles in it, and uh, water was, was real muddy. That's definite. Uh, I feel like a time when the water's – you got really dirty water – is is a must um for me that's that's what i if i had to just tell you if there was one time to use rattles is when you're fishing a jig and and dirty water good good answer good answer what about I, i'm curious uh what about scent jordan are you a believer in that do you use scent on your jigs you know i i personally don't but i don't i don't think it uh hurts at all to use scent um i like in the summertime to, to add a little chartreuse to it, do a little spike it, or whatever you like to use. I definitely, definitely use that. Um, I, I know it, when I, at the classic fish for post spawn, that's a time that I like to add a little chartreuse. It has probably a little scent in it. I always typically do that um, when the when the fish are post spawn. Seems to, seems to work. I got a question for you, uh, and, and I'd like you to show our j your jig. The comeback jig and, and hold it up high um on the camera so that so our guys can see it but uh talk can you talk a little bit about the head design uh what you did with that head design it, did you uh spend a lot of time with that and the importance of of the head on that jig yeah um the head's got a it's got a flat um flat side on the on the football head traditional you know football heads they're gonna have a round side so this flat side just helps helps the bait stand up and and that's simply all it does is is when you're dragging it along that flat side's just going to be um help help the jig stand up and that crawl's going to be standing up and the rubber's all going to be up so it's just uh just a little little thing that i liked about um uh, that style of football head just how it, it lays on the bottom so and i like i like the line tie on that too it's like is that a set a 60 degree 60 degree eye on that jig. yep yeah that's key i think that's key with that style jig i like 60 on it right on a dragon jig like that the answer was uh the pride of georgia event clark's hill clark's hill's right. the answer who's our winner brian the carpenter beer for bait i'm waiting for his info beer for bait congratulations you're winner of a missile jigs pack well Double done one. well done well done another great question we're ready to give away more stuff btc keep them coming keep, keep them coming. coming so uh you ready for uh, this year's classic? We're gonna have a repeat. Oh man, I don't know. I, I'm hoping, but uh, I know I, I'm a realist. I know how hard it is to win um, to win any tournament. But I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be trying my best for sure um, to to repeat. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad. I, I'm excited about Harwell. I've never fished a tournament there before, so it'll be uh, it'll be cool to 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 go to a new lake for me and. Um, I know a lot of guys, you know, in our, in our field has never, or I'd say a lot of the league guys hadn't fished there in March. So it's definitely going to be a, a, a new time. And, you know, I'm sure the lake will fish different than it has in the past. So it should be, should be a fun tournament. I, mean, I got to ask you a question. Everybody does this a little bit differently at the elite level. Uh, how, how, did, how do you prepare? What is classic practice like for you? You know, I, I, I spent probably uh, around four days at Hartwell, and I, I really, when a lake's that big, you know, Hartwell's is an overwhelming lake. You got huge, two huge rivers, you got a main lake, you got um, uh, lower end creeks. You could, I mean, you honestly could fish all three days in one creek and never, never see it all. So, when you're when you're at a lake that big, you really want to have a game plan in your head. You know where what what 
what kind of fishing do you like to do? And so before before I even go, the time of year I know we're going in is is going to be close to the spawn. It's going to be probably a little bit pre-spawn, and I'm going to be looking for things I like to fish. I like docks, stuff that I'm confident in, um, and you know the clear water I, I like. And I feel like the big fish live in the clear water. So, um, you know, you just really kind of want to narrow it down to what where you want to spend your practice. And, um, you know, I kind of in my mind eliminated some of the rivers just because I really don't don't like that style of fishing um, compared to compared to other guys. And, and everybody's different. And that's that goes back to definitely goes back to uh, finding your your own fish. You know, there's going to be guys that that's where they go. Uh, for me, you know, I like to condense it down a little bit and, uh, you know, you just try to hope you hopefully when you're preparing like that, you, you, you're making the right, right choices, but you definitely have to go with your, your gut on big lakes. Do you fit, did you fish a lot during practice or do you just drive around? Yeah, I, I fished a lot. Um, I, I like to drive around a good bit just so I can see everything, but I did fish, uh, a lot just to kind of, you know, get a feel for, you know, there's spotted bass in, in Hartwell, there's largemouth. Um, you know, you just kind of want to get a feel for what the fish like to, to get on. Um, you know, there's, like I said, docks, there's there's ditches, there's timber, and there's all different kinds of stuff you can fish on that lake. But but definitely, I, I like to fish. I fished around a pretty good bit. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I can't, I'm not one of those guys. I, I can ride around, but for only so long, and I got to start just and even in, I know it doesn't matter. I still like to at least jerk on some fish. <laughs> it, yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard. You did. How many days did you spend without fishing? I spent. Well, I I went down for exactly Jordan what you did. I went for four straight full days, and I fished for two hours in four days total. And I looked the rest of the time, and it's tough. I I, you know, the two hours that I fished, I just got so frustrated. I had to put the trawl motor down and fish. You know, so I understand that, but. Uh, it, it's it's tough. It's tough not to it's, to fish. It's the toughest it, thing. Four days with looking at a, a freaking craft. <laughs> it's very very difficult to do that. So. How about how about in practice leading up to the event, the three day event before practice? Do you shake fish off in practice? How many fish do you hook in practice? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, I feel like if, uh, if 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 like I'm going down like a stretch of docks and I, I catch one good one and there's a four or five more docks and i get another bite probably going to shake that fish off and typically i don't like to catch um more than two fish in an area or on a spot sometimes i'll catch two and leave and th that's really my you know you really have to get a feel for it everybody's different but two fish is kind of my cut off if i'm on a spot or um just down a stretch before i you know bail out no, no, and sure. go, go look somewhere else. Would you would you hook an eight pounder the day before the classic starts, like Ike did at Conroe? <laughs> did I do that? Yeah, I did. Didn't you? Oh, I did hook a big one. Yeah. yeah. Would you do that, Jordan? I wouldn't do I, that. I mean, I, I've done it before. No, I mean, not on purpose. I mean, it's not. The, I'm sure the fish wasn't sitting up there on the bed saying, "Catch me!" and I jerked it. I mean, he, I'm sure he just was fishing and caught it. So I mean, it, it happens, but. uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, man, I and I have a hard time not jerking on them, even in practice. It's just, you know what I mean. Yeah, I just like to catch. I think them. you you do it now more than you used to. I I probably do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely. Uh, I mean, if you're getting so many bites, um, you I mean you're gonna have to jerk on quite a bit. Like, I mean, the first day of our practice at Hartwell, whenever we go, I'm, I'm not gonna be sitting there shaking fish off. Probably. I mean, I'm, it's so far away from a, a tournament that. Full the the likelihood of catching a fit, that fish in a tournament is probably not just great. So, um, so yeah, I guess it depends how close it is to the tournament. Do you wait when you're practicing uh, that you know during the tournament and you tie into them? Do you got like a strategy for like when Ike's driving by so he doesn't see you catching that fish? <laughs> well, that's gotta be me. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard this before, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I remember the last tournament we fished at uh, at Malak. I was uh, I was practicing, and yeah, that's when you just you throw the you throw the rod the rod lockers up. If, if somebody <laughs> comes by, 
you're you're digging around down there, you yeah. know, for ten years, and you, your rods just you just free spool them, and hopefully they don't start. I to love jump. that <laughs> technique. I you, do that you, same uh, thing. Yeah, my my fear is you know it starts just jumping out there, and you look like an idiot. You know, you're <laughs> like, well, you got like a four pound smallmouth just jumping, and you're just there pretending you're you In know your with tackle, but. Yeah, I I've, do seen, that I've seen Clun do one too in practice that I love, and I use this one a lot too. Is that he'll have one hooked, and if somebody's like driving past and you know rubbernecking him, he'll he'll just put the rod down and he'll act like he's reeling, <laughs> you know. And, and so you know, to a guy driving past on pad, it looks like he's just steady winding. And you know how Clun does that stupid retarded reel yeah. kind of anyway, you know. So yeah. he's just yeah. like, you know, and he's just got his wrist going. I like that one. Yeah. I use that one a lot too. Yeah. Yep. That's a great, great decoy. Uh, Ranger, Ranger Mike says there's nothing like finding you found a good drum spot in practice because you didn't you didn't set the hook on that. That's true. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm not one to to go into an area and just start shaking them off like crazy. If, if you get a lot of bites, you you have to set the hook. Make sure they're not two pounders. You gotta see them. You gotta see a few. You gotta see. Yeah. Them. You gotta see them. I, I'm probably I, I'm sitting here telling you that I. I shake fish off, but I don't. I really don't shake that fish off. <laughs> I typically, I'm typically not getting that many bites anyway, so I, I have to see when I'm when I'm getting bit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, that flies in the face of you know a lot of anglers. They do, man. They anything if they if it breathes on their lure, they're they're trying to shake it off. Yeah, Johnny Cruz, very good friend friend of the show, friend mm -hmm. of ours. John Cruz hates setting hook on anything, man. Yep. It's crazy. He hates it. Matt, like Matt really makes fun of me a lot of times because I get on him for shaking fish off, and I'm, I'm usually the one guy that's, that's setting the hook on him. But. You know who's really bad about not shaking hit, fish off is uh, is Justin Kimmel when he's practicing with me for the Open. Right. And, uh, <laughs> he's cost you a few events in the past, I have to say. That's true. Definitely, he's cost you a few events. Uh, Jordan, what, shout out, JK. Yeah, shout out, JK. Jordan, what other events this year on the schedule are you looking forward to or is there one or two that stick out that you just can't wait to get to this year oh um i, I feel like martin you know i'm, I'm excited about it. it it's it's in alabama so anytime you get a a, a term in your home state it's it's always always good because that doesn't happen very very often um i'm looking forward to go back to lacrosse you know we went there last uh two years I guess two years ago, not last year, but the year before that, and that was a really fun place to fish. So that that'll be that'll be a good time. I'm looking definitely looking forward to that one. Yeah, me too. That place is loaded with them, Pete. Loaded. Yeah. loaded. That that looks super fun. Did they did they dial into the call rules up there? Is that changed, or is it is it going to be the same Minnesota crazy thing? I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, think you might want to dive, dive I, I, into you that. You know that before you go there. <laughs> I can't remember. It's so confusing. I always would just stay out of, what is it, Minnesota, the left side of the river? Yeah. Or, I always just stayed away from it because I was so confused from the very beginning. I'm just like, screw it. I ain't going to even fish on that side of, uh, of the river because I can't understand what the hell the rule is. You know? Wasn't it Boom Boom it, it was, that ran into the problem with that? he did, and also Brandon Polnick got screwed Polnick, That's there right, Polnick, well. too. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, Brian, you got one more good question for Jordan because yeah. we're, we're going to let him go in, yeah. in a couple minutes here. Talking about spotted bass, do you ever target them with a jig other than a finesse jig? Hmm. That's a that's a good question. 90% uh, of the time I'm using a, a finesse jig, uh, three-eighths or half-ounce. Um, that's really just what I – what I go with, it, it's really a, it, it's hard to beat. Um, you, you know, you could go bigger, but um, for spots, a finesse jig is, is by far uh, my go-to, and I feel like it's the best all around, you know, three-eighths or half. What's the best spotted bass lake in Alabama? Uh, for sure, Smith Lake. Um, Smith Lake's really, a really good spotted bass lake. Um, it's, it's, local guys have been really catching them good out there um i think last weekend it was um team team tournament it was not 1920 or 1930 to Ooh. win um Whoa. spot so it's pretty good biggins that is that's biggins. strong Giants. Giants. They, they catch them good jesse wiggins is the is the master down there he always is uh he stays on pretty good that's crazy he is the man there 
Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you, Jordan, one, one last key question from me before we let you go. Is there – give us one technique that's a new technique, cutting-edge technique that you're excited about, something new that you've seen or have been using that you think is going to be the next big thing. Oh, man, that's a – that could be a that could be a tough one. You know, I, I buy – I, I typically I buy new baits from time to time. Um, you know, I don't think I have anything that's that's, that's really standing out in my head as far as uh, a new bait. That you know, I try to dial in my baits more than you know a new bait. I I, I like to find um, little little niche baits that maybe. Um, you know, they're just catching you know a new a new jig with a with a different style head or things like that. I I don't have a certain new bait that's out that's that's definitely a, a game changer. Um, I just typically like to try to find little baits here and there that you know may catch them better than the next. I'm uh, as you were talking, uh, Jordan. I was scrolling through our Bash University Facebook feed, and we have a comment slash question from the real mark zona i don't know oh. if this is the real mark zona or not but the com the comment question is what's up with the hook on the blade on your fish head spin Ooh, he's diving deep this dude <laughs> giving away yeah, secrets that is the real mark zona because uh we actually uh you know filmed a show at smith lake several years ago and uh that that is a good secret um the, the the hook that I attach to the blade acts as uh, you know is almost a trailer hook. A lot of times, um, when you're throwing a fish head spin, the spotted bass will come up and hit the hit the blade. Yeah. So I have a little attach a little one off straight shank hook to the blade where it actually spins with the blade, and and spotted bass will come up and, and hit the blade, but they'll they'll get hooked instead. So it's a pretty good little trick. Zona like that one. He's still talking about it, obviously. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of one of those things you got to dial in because uh, uh, fish head spin is not really a bait that everybody throws. Yeah. But um, the the swivel that comes on the the blade is not meant for for bass to be pulling on. So you kind of change that out, and you got to do little modifications. But it's a it's a cool little trick. Very cool, mm -hmm. Pete. Very I, interesting. I got a, I got another question for you too. There's this uh, this this kid that you know was coming on, and he, you know his name is Matt Lee, and you know he's really starting to shine. He's got the same last name as you. Is it is it is it bothersome that he's coming on so strong <laughs> and trying to steal the spotlight from you right now? Yeah, I've heard of that kid. Yeah, <laughs> he he did good this year. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Matt. Matt really had a good, uh, good year, and you know that's what I wanted. That's what I definitely wanted to see. I, you know, he he found his groove. He found. He sure you did. Know, Matt and I talk a lot um, during tournaments, and he he typically he's, he's put me on a lot of fish over the years, or he's he's led me on to to a lot of fish. You know, just just talking about you know the lake and how it. Um, so I have to give Matt credit, and he he typically is is so close sometimes when, and, and that's just how it is. One lost fish, um, you know, one small decision. And this past year, he made a lot of good decisions, and he was really trusting his uh, instincts and and caught him really good. So I was definitely proud of him. Yeah, it was awesome. Both you guys had amazing seasons, man. It's uh, super super happy for you guys. A lot of success on the trail, uh, Pete. We're gonna let Jordan go, but before we do. Let me – I'll throw it to you again. We've got Jordan in class at one yep. of our shows, I think, Tulsa this year. Coming out to Tulsa, one of, yeah, one of our – Yeah, very excited to have yeah, you come out in Tulsa. It's, it's going to be awesome. hotbed of bass fishing. Uh, super psyched to have the Classic Champ with us in Tulsa. Yeah, it's going to be great. Can't wait to have you out there, Jordan. It's going to be fun. Yeah, can't wait. It's going to be my first one, so I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Brian, what do you got? What's Jordan going to be speaking about in Tulsa? Um, I'm pretty sure that I have uh, decided to speak for my, speak about electronics. Oh, um, one one of my main one of my main things I feel like helps every angler, um, no matter what part of the the, the country you're from. Big. I, mm -hmm. I knows it's it's a big deal. Um, 
just dissecting a lake or, or whatever. It's just, you know, learning your electronics, the ins and outs. So I'm going to kind of go through. I'm going to take some screenshots of uh, some some stuff over the next week or, or week or two. And I already have a few. And we're going to we're kind of go, go over everything and, and try to try to teach everybody. Well, that's excellent. Will you be uh, will you be instructing on how to use your electronics in a ball head jig to catch suspended fish? Yeah, I'm, I, I can't dial in like G, G can. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even gonna go. I'm not even gonna go down that route. route but uh, I'm I'm almost fast to it, so it'll it'll be fun. I'm looking definitely looking forward to it. Ah, uh, we're super we're super psyched to have you. It's gonna be uh, what are the dates on that, Mike? It's gonna be Jan. Jeez. Jan- January. It's the last weekend in Did January. Did you just gong the gong? What was that? <laughs> was that a gong? Yeah, yeah it was that Pete. Was he gonged something over there. <laughs> January 27th and 28th. Uh, come out and see uh, Jordan Lee out of Tulsa at Bash U. Uh, like I said, we're super psyched to have you this year. want to wish you, man, just want to wish you great success this year. Continued yes, yes. success in, in the elites. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate you being such a great representative of the sport i know a lot of the college kids are are looking to you and uh looking up to you uh you've accomplished some amazing amazing things in such a short period of time yes. and uh we we look forward to many more things like that to come buddy yeah jordan thanks thanks for joining us tonight and i'm going to see you in uh in a little bit lake martin yep. sounds good bro we got it jordan thanks, lee everybody thanks. jordan lee wow hey, thank you man thank y'all man, thanks, that was buddy. awesome i love when classic champs are on this show dude it's great it's a hard thing to do is win a classic. Man, oh man, there's not only... even thirty years old. And he's got one under his. Right. It's awesome. When's the last repeat classic champ? Shit, I can't even remember. Who uh, who has done it? Has Kevin done it? Kevin's back won twice. No, he's won, hasn't won back to back, but he's won twice. Not that many people have won twice. Right. Let alone let alone back to back. So I don't I don't know. Maybe that should be a trivia question. Right. You want to make that a trivia question? Let, let, we don't know the but answer we don't, to we it. We don't know the answer. <laughs> well, you got Google back there, bro. Google it. Dude. Who could? Whoever has the answer that we like will win. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're just going to make stuff up. Hey, I, I do want to mention this. Everybody watching and listening tonight, thank you for tuning in. We still got a little bit more of the show. Hang in there with us. But listen to me. Pete, this is a great little segue. What you just saw from Jordan Lee, Brian DeCarpenter, what you just heard from Jordan Lee, and that was good stuff. That's cutting-edge stuff. Juice. That's a tidbit of what you get as a subscriber. Micro that's a, that's a mic. That's a brand new missile jigs micro jig. Micro phallus. <laughs> that's a little phallus, a little tiny phallic symbol compared to <laughs> <laughs> to what you're gonna get as a subscriber <laughs> to be you. And it really is, Pete. It, it it's just a, a, a taste of what you're gonna get. Uh, if you're watching tonight, you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're watching at bashu.tv and you're not a subscriber, man, go over and subscribe. Uh, Pete, they're, they're not going to be sorry. Uh, all, I, you, all the information it, they're going to get, it's it's key. It doesn't matter where you are in your fishing. If you're just getting started, you know, you're watching us here and you're, you're getting rejuiced about fishing maybe when you were younger or whatever, or you're, you're a young kid, just a beginner. If you've been doing this for a while, you're looking to become more consistent. Uh, you, you're going to bodies of water. You don't know where to get started. Uh, you're a guy that, you know, is aspiring to sit in this guy's chair and scream and holler when he catches a fish. Um, you know, (laughs) whatever, whatever your place in the sport of fishing, we're bringing it, we're bringing it with the best speakers in the industry and they're teaching about the things that they're really good at and they truly help you. That's, that's our, that's our method here at Bash University. We want to help you guys get out to the water and be able to be consistent and accomplish your goals in a sport that we all love. And and uh, and that's what we do at Bash University TV. And we've got so much more coming, um, coming up in 2018. We're super excited about a lot of our programs, including one, one of our programs. Hey, if you guys are new to the sport, Bash University Basics Ooh. is coming in 2018. Okay. So if, a, if the things that we're talking about, fluorocarbon line and, knots and you know strands of rubber weed guards if that kind of stuff doesn't make sense to you uh bash university basics is is going to be available and it's going to it's going to be the the basics it's going to be the baseline uh to help you get to the next level with all the stuff that we're teaching at bash university yes and it's all available all the time all the time and subscribe right now pete and we've got some great deals for you including you see this hat on my head you see this hat bry you see this hat on my head 
You see that hat on Pete's head? You're going to get one of them free if you subscribe. Right, Pete? And a holiday card autographed by wow. yours truly and What's you as place? well. Pretty awesome. Yep. We'll send that stuff right out to you just for trying Bash University. And guess what? That promotion is going to end. Uh, so act now. That, that ends on mm. December 31st. Midnight Pacific time, so now's the time to get on over and get subscribed. Take advantage of that great deal because uh, that's going to go away the first of the year. But we're happy to bring it, and we'll keep bringing it right through the end of the year uh, here at Bash University. All right, and Brian, this is a great – yes, sir. All right, so you guys threw that uh, trivia question at me. Yes. Which was amazing, by the way. It was? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the answers I've got. I've okay. got never done, which I, I'm not sure if that's right because a lot of people come back with Rick Klon. And mm -hmm. then, and then Kevin Van Dam in 2010, 2011. But the question was, who was the last person to win back-to-back -back classics? Yeah. Was Did that we're... the question? <laughs> <laughs> Should we even play this game? No. <laughs> so, well, I got 25 people. Oh, we that do. Thing. Well, somebody wants to win. I don't. <laughs> but the problem is, we we honestly don't. Well, I have to Google it. Somebody that is, that is a problem when you do that. Well, time. it is yeah. a problem. Yeah. yeah well, normally <laughs> Eric, the intern's back there to do something. He's not there tonight. By is the way, by the way, there's a job opening. Send, job. send your applications in <laughs> if you want to sit over here. It's job opening tonight. All right, listen, uh, Brian, I'm excited because we're about to to switch gears here in a second, and I love this part of the show, Pete. We're going to do a little Q and A. We're going to open it up uh, to to questions and comments uh, across the board. And we've got a lot more prizes to give away. We got a lot more oh, prizes. Tons, to give dude. Away. tons of prizes. Tons of prizes. Are we going to take a break? Or are we going right to Q and A? No, let's take a break. Okay. I'm going to play a little video. There, there were so many questions in the first half I yes. couldn't get to. Okay. That's what we're going to do this next time. Guys, Perfect. keep your questions ready. Let's and, have some fun. And, hey, guys, if you haven't subscribed, now's the time because you can get your questions over on the IM board. Do it now while we're on break over at Bashy.tv. We'll send you the free hat and come on in and join the party. Hang in with us. We'll be right back. Hey. Hey guys, Gerald Swindle, I don't like Gunnersville. Today we're going to do a little bit of what we call Doc Skipping, the next level. We're going to talk about things that a lot of questions are asking when I'm doing seminars about skipping jigs and skipping docks and is there a special setup, is there a special jig. There's some secrets. I'm going to reveal some of them. Some of them is not going to be what you think they are. There's going to be a few tips I think I can teach you to help you be a better jig skipper. To me, straight out of the pack, 3 8 ounce Buckeye balling out jig, Zoom Z crawl chunk, bite off the junior about half of it threaded up on there 16 pound sunline Gerald Swindle G4 7 foot rod vapor quantum reel 7 to 1 ratio so no special equipment just a few techniques and a few tips I think I can share with you today to help you be a better jig skipper let's clear up some of the mystery a lot of people will say to me man I know that y'all probably getting reels with yeah UMVD y'all get reels it's got different braking system different bearings uh, no we don't it's just straight out of the pack straight from quantum same stuff you can walk in any outdoor store and buy same rod everything is factored there's no trick equipment here simply hand-eye coordination uh, excessive practice but there's some do's and don'ts when it comes to skipping jigs and, and, and a lot of people say man I struggle to skip jigs let me tell you one thing you can't skip in waves. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you think you are. You're not gonna skip in a six to 10 inch chop and be accurate. It's just not the same. The water level's not smooth. The jig can't flow smooth. So one thing you wanna take a note, if you're trying to skip when it's windy and you're struggling, it's not your bad skipper, it's bad conditions. Guys set their equipment up, they think maybe I should tighten the brake way down where the line doesn't even hardly come off here to keep me from backlashing. It's actually right the opposite. You want it pretty loose. The harder you throw, the more you pull your hand out and you throw off to the left or to the right. You overthrow. So you kind of set that. Everybody's like, what's the secret settings? It's about like I cast going, to, going down the bank. I mean, actually, it's pretty loose. You see me mashing it. It's just falling off the reel. That's a 3 8 ounce jig. And you can see how fast it's falling off the reel. There's, there's not a lot of resistance on that. It's all about the wrist, hand-eye coordination, and your bait's going to land where your eyes are looking. Your bait's always going to be traveling where the rod tip's pointed when you let go of the cast. For instance, if I pull up at a dock and I'm looking at the targets, once I decide to make the cast, once I decide that's where I want to throw my jig at, I never ever take my eyes off where I want that bait to go. And right now I'm staring at the left side of that motor on that pontoon, right under the sun tracker. Up under the pontoon, that's where my eyes is focused, that's where my rod tip was pointed when I let the bait go. 
skip right in where you want your bait to be. What you're doing then is you're really just putting the bait where other people are not putting it. Uh, to me, that's the key. Now let's get something straight. Let's talk, let's break it down from a fundamental standpoint. A lot of people say, well, I can skip docks and I can skip jigs. You can, you can. What we want to talk about today is how to be a better dock fisherman or a better jig skipper if you got a partner in the boat with you. Everybody skips the old baseball swing. You got that one buddy who pulls up on the dock and he goes, yep, there he is, right there, let's see. Oh, God, that was a beauty. It's not tournament fishing. That's not tournament fishing. It's not even realistic. You don't have that much time. 99% of the time, you don't even have that much room. You want this to be second nature. You want this to be low body movement, eyes doing most of the work, picking out your target. I make this so if I was fishing this dock and I finished this skip up off the pontoon or I'm swimming my jig in and I cut my eyes to this next dock, see I didn't wind up. I didn't baseball swing it up under there. You simply want to cast it real smooth, let the bait glide. The harder you throw the bait, the more commotion you make, sometimes not good. Do you see this water's definitely still? That bait coming in at 100 miles an hour is not going to be what you want. You simply roll your wrist, throw the bait under. When you've got a partner that's dominantly right-handed and you want to get on front of the boat and fish docks with him, you need to be able to throw backhanded. You need to be able to pick your target out up under that pontoon and skip to it every time because that's when you become a tougher team. And sometimes when you're shooting videos, they accidentally bite it and you get to jerk on one. Reel it back out. So if you're in a team tournament, you see where I'm talking about. This is not the dominant side for most right-handed fishermen. They want to throw this way. This particular situation, I'm on it. I mean, I'm on it like KFC on a 299 sale. And what this enables you to do is take this partner right here, could take a flipping stick and pitch, and this guy right here could take a bait and skip. You're really not even fishing for the same fish. You know, so when I'm looking at this dock, I'm gonna look at the right-hand side where the tube of six is almost against the water, smallest area immediately in my mind, my mind, I said, hardest place to get to, nobody's gonna throw there, that's where I'm gonna try to throw. So this is when you might use your sidearm coming down the bank, you reach up here and you wanna hit that gap. You wanna put the bait in there where you think other guys are not casting. And the reason why, there's a fish in there. He hasn't seen a bait. He's gonna immediately react to it and bite it. Same thing, got another slip. It's all day long. It's all about the backhand. I've never changed my boat direction. If you truly have to fix your boat direction so you can make the proper cast sometime, I would encourage you to work on your cast. Work on your cast. Don't, don't let that stop you from catching bass. No matter where your body's at or where your boat's at, you want to be in position. You can practice this in your carport, out in your yard. You don't actually have to be on Lake Gunner for skipping docks. You can be on concrete skipping in cups. The presentation is the same. Backhand roll, underhand roll, straight in roll. You're just practicing the technique of casting. Big dock coming up here. Got a lot of shade, a lot of open room. So let's start by way up under, swim it out. Got a catwalk and pair of stairs back there. I'm gonna work them. As I get closer, I'll bring my backhand cast right back where I need it. So I've hit those two levels of dock back there. Backhand right here. Pretty much covered from the last half of the dock out, the biggest shade, I've covered in three casts. Pretty good chance if that fish was there, he seen my bait. Hey everybody, welcome back to BU Live. Thanks for hanging in with us. Pete Glusick, it's been a great show so far. We're talking jigs. Yes, we were talking jigs with Bassmaster Classic Champion Jordan Lee. I gotta tell you, that was a long interview and I learned some stuff there, man. I learned some stuff. Amazing how an old guy like me can still learn from a young guy. And isn't that cool? I love that about the sport. That's our that's our it. sport. It, I love that about the sport. It's ever evolving, it's ever changing. You guys are always looking at stuff differently and exposing us to things that we we never thought of and I, I think a lot of that comes from the young guys you know they yeah they they're coming on the water they're um they're looking at their sonar yeah. and using it in ways that that you know we haven't used it before and uh you know developing strategies that that we haven't seen before but jordan is i mean he's cool as the other side of the pillow i mean he's just unflappable he has he's been that way since he was here on the sofa 
on an episode oh, of awesome. Ike Live yeah, where, so awesome. you know, he's on camera as if he'd been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I remember that. I remember that. It was the Delaware River event. We had him on the couch right here. It was so yeah. cool. He wasn't yep. nervous at all. He was just nah. hanging out. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. It's like it's no taken, pressure, no it's matter what. It's taken me three years to get a third of that good. Yeah. Bryce still back there with his hands under his armpits, Fidgeting. rocking back and forth, <laughs> sweaty. Scratching. Scratching his neck. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, let me, uh, again, I want to thank everybody uh, for watching tonight. If you're on Facebook, uh, if you're over on YouTube watching, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we want you to subscribe. We want you to become a subscriber. A lot of benefits, including the ability to comment and question tonight and win a lot of good prizes. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, go over to bashu.tv, subscribe, and you'll be eligible for some of this stuff. Pete, I want to throw out another question real quick. Let's give away another prize. This is going to be for another one of the missile jig prizes, which is a mini flip, a headbanger, a flip out, and, of course, some real snot and some amazing trailers from Loaded for Bass. And this is a, a question I'm going to pose because it's fresh on my mind. It happened three years ago, but I'm still thinking about it. What jig... Color. I'm sorry. What was the jig? <laughs> what was the jig color I used on the prototype missile mini flip that I used when I won the Delaware River tournament a few years ago? So the so the we want to know what was the jig color I used to win the Delaware River Bass Elite event. First one to get that right is going to win a giant missile jigs gift pack. Real quick, too, Pete. Want to give a shout out to uh, J.K. Uh, beer tonight is Creature Comfort, uh, Athens, Georgia. Brian DeCarbonner, definitely in my top ten list of favorite beers. I got to oh, tell you, right? It's stellar. Stellar beer. Uh, shout out to J.K. and uh, Creature Comfort's beer tonight. Very, very delicious. I'm surprised. Tropicalia. I'm surprised you still have any of those kicking around. Man, they're so good. I, he he actually got me. I think he got me a 12 pack. Mm -hmm. I think we went through six or seven of them at the last Ike Live, and I think we have five or so left mm -hmm. so me and brian are polishing them off tonight nice. very very good very great beer mm -hmm. very great beer uh in a little bit pete this is a cool part of be live i love this part of the show uh we're going to totally open it up to question and answers not only on the im board but in just a little bit we're going to get brian the carpenter to put a toll-free number up there and if you want to call in We'd love to hear from them, right, Pete? We'd Absolutely. love to answer some questions and comments this, and all that stuff. We, we do this for you guys, for our subscribers. This is all for you uh, to answer your questions, give away all these prizes. Um, this is this is a benefit that we're providing to our subscribers, and we're happy to do it. And um, and it's it's funny you bring up the, the Delaware River. I just happened on that, um, I don't know, a week or two ago, and I rewatched the Delaware River Tournament. Wow. I think maybe... All the way through for the first time. That's cool. What did you think? Well, it was awesome. I, you know, and I, and I, I can't. The, the, my favorite moment is probably everybody's favorite moment as far as fish catches go, is when you were on the main river, and it wasn't happening, and you, you bailed, uh, and went up into Woodbury. Yeah. And come onto that bridge, and got that three and a half pounder. Oh, like crazy. On, on like your first cast or yeah it was instant and, and it was and it was crazy because you were you caught that giant and it's a giant for the delaware right three and a half pounds oh, giant huge. and your boats the current's mashing you against pilings the fish is coming in here and i'm watching you land this fish and I, i'm like you were so co close to just getting pinched in between the boat and the piling <laughs> and that fish just came i mean you played it just it, it couldn't have gone any better it's crazy it could have gone a lot oh, worse yeah but uh, but it was awesome, and then you caught that fish. That was on the way out, right? It was on the way in. Way in. You caught one on the way out. The, yeah, I did catch one on the way out the third day. Third day. That's when I was yeah, out there. And, and the last day, I caught a small. My second keeper of the day was on the way out on a piece right across from that marina yeah. in Woodbury Creek. That was a small one. I ended up calling that one. But, uh, yeah. And, would, and, you, would you call that PBJ, or would you call it brown purple? Uh, it's brown purple. I was looking for brown purple. It's yeah. brown purple. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the winner for brown purple? Let's see. <laughs> Brown purple is the winner. I got to go Jorge C. 3121. Jorge C. 3121. Oh, You're the winner. Correct answer was Brown purple. I I, I got to tell you, I got to give Pete some credit. Pete's turned me on to that color years ago in tidal water. Not just the Delaware, yeah. uh, but uh, all the tidal water here in the East Coast, Hudson River, Upper Bay, 
It's a great color. Uh, why is brown purple such a good color? Even Jordan talked about brown and brown purple in his big mop jig. Why is brown purple such a... <laughs> I've got to come Knock up with off. an answer quick, kid. Why is brown purple <laughs> I, I, such a good you know, color? I, Nobody really knows, right? You can you can go back to the color selector days and try to figure it out. But I will I will tell you this: that color purple in uh, in in water that's slightly stained Stain. has yep. tremendous visibility. It has a tremendous flash. Uh, it's visible under those slightly stained water conditions, and um, and you know for that reason, it's it's why I throw it. I mean, I throw it in a in a shaky head style Find worm. I throw it in a stick bait, a soft plastic stick bait. I throw it uh, in a jig. And, um, you know, when you have that that slightly stained water, that purple just jumps. The fish can see it. Um, and I love the two-tone nature of it because most everything environment in na in nature has an underbelly, has a two-tone match to it. Um, you know, you've got, you've got the purple belly and you've got brown. You've got that conflicting contrast those laminates i love laminates for that same reason yeah on uh stuff like sankos and um you know but that, i don't know that's the reason why i think it works but in reality they bite it they right bite it. so they bite it so i throw it they i throw it, it a lot and uh yeah I, I was tickled to death that i had some you know role in that river tournament because that was that was just an amazing it, win. it was a, it was a key bait key, key jig yeah. and i actually brian i if it's okay i want Michael? to talk about another topic real quick that it's it's interesting because i i do want to talk about jig size and i want to get back to it and you know if you look at jordan lee's classic win that mop look at Pete, the size was, of that jig. was so important to him and a lot of those wins you see that big profile jig is so important Creating a bigger presence, getting a bigger bite, slowing the fall of oh, that my. jig a little bit. But for me, on the Delaware River, it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. It was the opposite, and I wanted a small jig. I wanted a compact jig. I wanted a jig that was was a smaller profile, and that fell faster. It fell. Mm -hmm. It fell more rapidly. Quick fall in and out, and and I love for that reason. I love that that little compact jig so mm -hmm. there's a good side by side right there for you big giant full-size mop look at the, look at the size of that thing and a little tiny uh, missile missile jigs mini flip compact jig you know but but again there's a couple reasons why you choose one over the other right a compact jig imitates smaller bait a lot better and on the delaware they're not eating a lot of giant bait they're eating a lot of smaller bait but what about that fall, right? The rate of fall on a small jig is key. A, a, a current and it, moving water, right? Well, it's really key. Uh, rate of descent, you know, it's it's speed. Speed triggers strikes. And the smaller profile bait, uh, you know, with the heavier weight, is going to fall. It has a less friction. It's going to move faster through the water column as it falls. And it's going to trigger strikes from those fish, in, especially in the summertime, that are hard yes. to trigger strikes from. Yes. But I really think... Especially like on the Delaware, where I think you had a big advantage with that small, compact, heavy jig, is that it in the current because we got so much current there. Heavy current. When heavy you, current. when you were, you that jig was able to stick tight to the cover, where so key. where a lighter jig or a bigger profile might get washed blow away. Blow away. Not even not even the fish won't even get it. They won't even look at it. Just blow away. Right. Yeah. yeah that that question came through earlier about uh, fishing jigs and. In current, and again, guys bombed me with questions earlier. Yeah, just couldn't get to them with Jordan on, but that yep. was a question that came up. You know, I know that relates to the Delaware because it's it's an extreme current, but is that kind of typical in other current situations that you that you tend to go a little bit smaller with your jig as opposed to fishing a non non tidal body of water? I, I, I think the, depending on the amount of current, you know, it, it's a it's a big factor, right? The the bigger the profile of the jig. The more the current's going to have an impact on it, right? So, well, what about it, the James? How you roll on the James? It, on the James, it was, uh, you know, honestly, I, I mean, I caught that monster twenty pound bag, on, on, you know, Mike's mini flip is the same exact principle. Okay. Fishing in the current, fishing tight to the cover. If you want to stay tight to the habitat, you can't get too big a profile. It, ju it's just a wash away, and the bass in that heavy current, their nose is tight. 
right? They've got to be yeah. tight to the to the, to the habitat I, because the you know they can't be back off. The colonel just wash them like, away. I feel like their forage is smaller too. You know, I, there's something to do. The forage typically, you know, in a lot of these places, I think is smaller, and uh, and that's a big factor as far as the profile goes. Uh, and I think that's why the mop jig works so well in the early spring because the bait fish are often big that time of year. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. things that bass are feeding on are big that time of year. So in the pre-spawn and the immediate post-spawn, you know, that's when the bait is the biggest that the yeah. bass is trying to feed on. Yeah. So you want to use that big giant jig. That's that's when it's going to roll. Uh, at least that's that's what I've seen out there. Yeah, and the other thing is you got to think of the fishery you're fishing, right? So, like, you know, a lake like Hartwell, uh, lakes in Texas that have big bass, you're not hurting yourself by using a big jig. Mm -hmm. But on a lake, on a river like the Delaware, you know, there's a lot of small, <laughs> there's a lot of pound, pound and a half fish. It makes more sense to use a smaller jig. You know what I mean? Right. So you got to think about the forage, matching the forage. You got to think about the fish size. There's so many things that components that go into picking a jig, Pete. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it can be complicated. It can be. You got to think about uh, different elements, you know, for sure. I got a question here. Yes. All right. So when fishing wood and brush, uh what's better vertical or horizontal line tie that comes from aaron and okc aaron that's a good question i think that's a aaron, prize winning I, question. aaron you just want a prize great question i'm going to answer i'm going to throw it to pete I, i'm going to give you a, a real short synopsis for me and it's really you hit it right on the head when i'm fishing hard cover uh, wood and rock i like a horizontal line tie when i'm fishing Right there, and you've got one right there. We've got a Pete's holding up. That's the Missile Jigs Headbanger, which is a great rock jig. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm raving about the Headbanger for fishing around rock. I like the horizontal. I like that, that horizontal line tie that helps it creep over that hard cover a lot better. But, Pete, when I want to get in and out and I want to get into the cover, and now I'm talking about grass i'm talking about milfoil hydrilla lily pads i love the 90 degree line tie i love i love the line tie that's even with the hook uh mm -hmm. th there's an example of one right there i love that line tie that's that's vertical uh that's that's in line with the hook it gets in and out better uh it's it's a better jig that gets in and out of that cover what do you have that same preference peter what's your deal you know, I kind of defer to you on that, uh, you know, specifically, but I, I tell you this, this is, this is my deal with a jig. If I'm throwing it into the habitat and I've got to go get it every time I get it in there, uh, I'm going to change. I'm going right. to, I'm going to alter the type of head, the type of line tie until I find the one that's going to get through that so you're habitat. you're fishing the moment a little bit, letting the letting the cover dictate which jig you're using. Because a lot of times it changes. Like brush piles are incredibly challenging, right? To get through, yeah. So you you got to be able to you, you got to be able to get a jig because what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to be intimidated and and fearful and not throw into the brush pile, right? Uh, because you you know what's going to happen. You're going to get hung up. You got to go in there and get it. And if you have to do that, well, you ruin the cover. You ruin your chances to catch that fish. Yeah. So, you know, I want a bait. You know, I want a jig that's going to help me effectively get through the cover uh, consistently. And you're always going to get hung up, right? Yeah. If you're fishing the way you're supposed to be fishing, occasionally you're going to get hung up. But, you know, I use different head styles and, and different jigs, and, and, and I mix it up a lot. Because there's, there's some stuff that's impossible. Right. Like, uh... Like pine trees with pine cones on them. That's uh, the nightmare. It's like it's nightmare ne scenario. Next to impossible to get to get a jig through there. So you got to try to experiment and find the ones that that can work good. Yeah, in and, that and, kind of habitat. And real quick, I'm going to remind everybody watching: if you're a subscriber to BU, go back and watch JT Kenny's class on selecting the right jig. It's a great, great seminar, Pete. I know you were raving about it, mm -hmm. and he talks about Brian the Carpenter. He talks about he likes the horizontal line ties when he's pitching wood or docks he likes that horizontal line tie with a broader head and when he gets around grass he likes that vertical inline mm -hmm. line tie more of a of a of a v-shaped a pointed style head that helps get in and out of the grass so invite everybody that's a subscriber to go back and review that class it was a great seminar it, it, one of the things he says which is kind of along the lines of, of the thing i just talked about is he's we he nicknamed the grass wizard that's kind of his brand and he builds this amazing grass jig and he'll flat up say that don't use it around wood. 
Don't use it around right. pox. Right. It's going to hang up. But when you're fishing grass, that's the jig that you want to be using. Yeah. It's, it's going to be able to get you through there. So different head styles for different applications. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty amazing. What do you got back there, BTC? <laughs> he just broke out into laughter. I'm, I don't think it was my I comment. It. I love it. Uh, I don't know. I was just reading a comment on the message board. <laughs> you want to repeat it back? Should I? All yeah. Right, what the heck? This is, we're going to derail for a second. Can I ask a question? This is Matt V. Matt V? Matt V. Getting laughs tonight? I, I don't know. <laughs> Matt V, you win a prize for making us laugh. What do you got? <laughs> Can I ask a question? If all the people that are ask, that are able to use this message board are BUTV subscribers, how come they are all asking questions that are answered by seminars on BUTV? I can answer every single question that is asked by these guys because I've watched almost every single video available on BUT TV. Lack of memory or just really desperate to win a prize back? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get hollered at for asking that question. Yeah. <laughs> That's very right. awesome. Well, it's, uh, you know, as a result of asking that question, we're going to deduct three months from your subscription <laughs> for Bash University TV. <laughs> That's funny. Give, give, him a, give him a three-month extension. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Jorge, Jorge from earlier, you never sent me your contact info. Send, Jorge. Send it through the IM board. I monitor these questions before sending them through. That's why there's a delay because the IM board's been on fire and I'm working solo tonight. Yes, solo. so I'm trying to keep up. But Jorge, send me your info. Um, you're letting a prize sit out there, bro. Yeah. And uh, Matt V, just for throwing shade on everybody tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, man. Pete wants to send you an autograph. Shade uh, Plano. Head, autograph headshot of Pete. Throwing shade. <laughs> <laughs> throwing shade oh, that's on funny. Plano. Throwing shade on Plano. Uh, uh, Brian Carmen, let me remind everybody, uh, we are in the Q&A section yeah. of BU Live tonight, and we want everybody to comment and question in. Please hit us up on the IM. Brian, put up a, when you get a chance in the next couple the, minutes, put up a toll-free number. I'm going to put the number on the instant message board on the Bass U page. Okay. That way, there's only the Oh, gotcha. Access. Okay. So the toll-free number is going to go up on the IM page. If you're a Bass U subscriber, you're going to have access to that phone number. Call in. We'd love to hear from him, Pete. We'd absolutely love to hear from you, and I'm going to bring up a uh, a memory of mine one of the one of the one of my my first jig fishing memories that occurred right here on Lake X. Oh, let me hear! I want to hear about that. This was amazing. Um, you know, Mike now lives on Lake X, and back in the day before all the rich guys bought it and privatized <laughs> it, now I can't fish there anymore. The um, <laughs> the uh, Lake X. <laughs> <laughs> Lake Lake X is an amazing, amazing fishery in, here in New Jersey, and it's a it's a really, really shallow uh, body water. But um, twenty years ago, I watched uh, I watched some stuff from Denny Brower, and uh, and he was talking about flipping and pitching, and and I was I was new to fishing, you know, and and really, you know. Caught them on plastic worms. Yeah. Caught a few on, on the Rapala floating yeah. minnow. Typical South Jersey just, stuff. Yeah. Just getting started, right? Yeah. And I'm like, man, he's he's his, he's right next to the trees. And he's jacking these five pounders yeah. on a jig and a, and a pork rind. And I was fascinated by it. And and I went out and I bought a few jigs and I bought a few pork rinds. And, and we were talking about this earlier. Did I didn't know whether to to put the rind on belly up or belly right. down what's the right way what's yeah. the what's the right way i didn't really know but i tied i tied this jig on with the pork rind and this shoreline that goes right down right down the side of this lake right here where we're at and uh <laughs> a lot of wood on that and there's bushes but you know what yeah 20 years ago there was two feet of water on those bushes right right more now, water a little little siltation happens in these yeah. little lakes so it's a little shallower now, but I remember I, I, like it was yesterday. Like, all right, I'm trying to remember the video. Um, I probably was doing it with a spinning rod, maybe my first bait wow. caster. I'm not yeah. sure, yeah. but I pitched into the bush and it went down and I'm trying to get this and my line went thunk and it, it, it shocked me to, to my <laughs> core. I'm like, what just happened? Yeah. It can't be that easy. Yeah. You know? And, and I jacked this two and a half, three pound, not, not a giant fish. But it was my first jig That's fish. That's cool. And it, it happened right here. Wow. I went down that bank, caught lo, lo, no less than 10 bass wow. down that bank. All, you know, so, you know, solid, you know, fish for this area. Yeah. And um, Still a good and, bank. It's still in the spring when the water is typically a little higher. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's a really good bank yeah. in the spring. Still a good bank. But I but I remember uh, feeling like it's like we get this question so often about getting confidence in that technique and yeah. and it really just takes that one bite, but I, but I re- that one bite. Yet and and you get complete confidence. <laughs> Uh, in in, uh, in fishing a jig because you know the the thing about it is anytime you're fishing a jig you stand to catch the biggest fish in the lake yeah you know and and how cool is that very cool, very cool. Know? it's a big fish bait uh, Brian Carpenter we got a caller uh, caller what's your name where are you call from what's your question you got me yes caller what's your name where are you call from Mike hey it's Noah real smart Noah hey. what's up how are you pretty good what's your question tonight? Hey, by the way. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays Merry, to you. Merry Christmas to you as well and Becky and the family. Thank you. You guys have a good one, I'm sure. We had an awesome one. We had an awesome one. That's the kids a, had a good that's time. Awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Pete, how are you? Man, I'm, I'm doing good. No, it's good to hear from you. We we gave away some uh, cool prize packs with some real snot in them tonight. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good stuff. And we need it right now because it's freezing outside. <laughs> That's true. Are you out fishing on the Chesapeake in this uh, freezing cold weather? <laughs> Not without my knickers, that's for sure. <laughs> it's freezing out there. The ice I is on the its dog, way. I let the dog out earlier, and the dog looked at me like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the, when you let the dog out, and the dog's peeing, and, and dog, the pee freezes as it's coming out of him, <laughs> you know it's cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pete, good point about the jigs. I, I remember fishing on Lock Raven Reservoir at like 15 years old with the old rubber jig with the crazy looking head that they used to dip in some sort of like textured rubber paint and then you throw the pork the pork trailer on you. You never knew what side to put up, but it yep. didn't matter. You had a brown wow. jig with a black trailer, a black, uh, one of those black jig and pigs or whatever, the pig frogs. Man, they, they just ate it. <laughs> Now you you know you have to entice them every way which way of a Sunday. Hey, well you know the colors are better with plastic and that's really cool, but when they bit a jig with that pork trailer on it, I mean they would never let go of it. Yeah, I I gotta I, this is a great segue, Pete. And I gotta jump in real quick, Noah, and and I I gotta do just a little plug real quick. Berkeley Power Bait has this new thing called Max Scent, which for for those of you that know Power Bait and you know Gulp. The best way I can describe it, it's a cross between the two. It's a it's a wet, stinky product, but they make it in a chunk now. And dude, to me, this is going to be the deal, because it, it, it reminds me of the old pork rind yeah. through smell and consistency. Mm-hmm. But it's got uh, a lot. You can do a lot better colors. It holds on the on the hook a lot better. So I want to give a quick shout out to Berkeley Power Bait. Cool trailer. It looks awesome. Very good trail. Stinks too. That looks awesome. Smell your fingers, Pete. <laughs> smell your fingers. No, smell your fingers. Go ahead. I told you. Good stuff. It's terrible, right? I've, I've been hearing really good things about That's Berkeley. What I'm scent. It smells like crap. Well, scent is key this time of year. Oh. You know. Oh God, I smell my fingers. <laughs> oh. Well, I just, I got. Hey, I just wanted to give you guys a shout out and just say uh, happy New Year to you guys. And uh, hey, Noah. I got. A, I got a message on the IM board. Does real snot really keep ice off your line? Yes, it does. Absolutely, absolutely. It it, uh, it it definitely helps. I mean, you you don't want to take it out there. You don't want to leave it in your truck overnight. But put it in your pocket and squirt some on the on the on your reel and a little on the guides, and it definitely will uh, help keep the ice off of you. Yep, I can attest to it. It's key. Well, you know, another tip that that I could really use from uh, you uh, at and and the guys at Real Snot is uh, any weight loss tips that I could use for 2018. <laughs> Yeah, just eat half of your plate. Don't eat the whole plate. <laughs> Put it in half. That means half a pizza, Pete. Half That's a pizza, right. not the whole pizza. Right. I can manage. I can manage that. <laughs> uh, and, and, All right, guys, have a great New Year and uh, be safe. Happy New Year, great. Noah. Happy New Year. Happy yeah, New too. Year, buddy. Thanks for the call. See you, fellas. See you know. Bye bye. Yeah, by the uh, was, that was actually a good question. I, I I tell you, this time of the year, a lot of uh, our viewers are watching. Uh, live in this part of the country you're fishing winter leagues dude that product is a lifesaver man when you know when you don't have it your guides are freezing up every cast dude yep. it's such a pain in the butt dude it damages your line you cast baits off 
But that stuff will save you a lot of heartache, man. And uh, definitely recommend Real Snot product this time of the year. For those cows. that are bold enough to go out and right. fish this time yeah, of year. Yeah, you got to be bold. You got to. You have got to have some balls. Man. Yeah. You got to have some balls. Yeah. I, real quick, Brian, while we're waiting for the next caller or comment, I want to talk a little bit about jig trailer selection, Pete. I want to call you to the plate on it. Uh, a lot of guys watching and listening tonight, they're loving the concept of the jig. They're wanting to use a jig. They heard Jordan say that, you know, he loves a space monkey, loves a crawl style trailer. Give me your input on what is the right trailer for a jig. Is do you change it based on water color or water temperature? How do you choose the trailer on your jig? You know, it's uh, you know, you got yeah, the jig trailers that I choose between are action trailers and non-action trailers. Yes. Uh, this this trailer, um, this power bait that you just pulled out for us. So I'm going to pull it out again. It's what I would categorize in the in the non-action. Although there's action, it's it's a subtle, subtle, more subtle action, neutral, neutral, neutral action. type action. Good way to explain it. Um, and then you have trailers. Uh, I think you're digging for some right yeah. now. Heavy um, action. And this is a missile uh, bait. This is a twin tail, and you know this has a lot of action, a swim and tail action. So there's times when I want the swim and tail action, and there's times when I want the more neutral action. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you when those times are for me. Okay. You know when I'm dealing with uh, temp- water temperatures in the 50s or lower. Cold water. Cold water. I'm typically going for a more neutral action. Chunk style. Chunk. Neutral style yeah. trailer. Yep. That's typical. That's typically what I'll go 1, for. One thousand percent agree with you. Now here's and and then as the water warms, uh, I want action, right? And and you know the fish are gonna spawn. Post spawn is going to occur in the 70 degree water temperatures. Uh, I'm going to want something that has a lot of commotion. Uh, the fish are very active; they're chasers, and I'm going to go with something a little bit more action. Now, here's something that's really unique that I've kind of dialed in on in recent years that has helped me catch a lot of jig fish because a lot of people don't throw jigs in the real hot weather. Right. Switching, choosing to switch over to soft plastics. Right. Various other things because they, they maybe can trigger more strikes when the water temperatures get up in those 80s and up. Super hot. Because what happens, what I noticed is when the water temperature gets real hot, those fish become lethargic again. It's reverse. And, yeah. And I go back to the neutral uh, style wow. plastics. Great tip. And that has helped me. It helped me down on the James River. Wow. With Great a very, tip. very... Yeah. In, in 90 degree water temperatures, a very neutral trailer. Yeah, good tip. Jacking the big ones um, and not so much on the really, really active styles when the water temperature gets real hot. Wow. So that, that's something that I'm Great experimenting tip. with and learning. Awesome tip. Helping me a lot. Yeah, I, I just want to throw in there real quick, Pete. And you, Everything you said, I totally agree with. You hit it on the head. The only other one I throw in there is what I would call moderate water temperature or moderately active fish where you're in between. Mm-hmm. It's not super cold. It's not super hot. It's, you know, you're you're kind of in the middle. I love a crawl for, for those situations, like a uh, chigger crawl, you know, style bait, uh, zoom, speed crawl, some kind of crawl bait. I love a crawl in those in-between, mm-hmm. you know, situations. And it's it's got more action than a chunk, but less action than like a twin tail. You right. know, it's, it's a nice compromise is a, is a crawl style bait. And a chigger crawl is a great one. You know, uh, chig- chigger crawl is is perfect. You know, little bait. Yep. There you have it. There's, there's so many. And, you know, the thing about, like, jigs, I like to keep them simple, too. Like, you, you know, I watch Gerald. Got to go watch Gerald Swindle's j- Simple Jig Fishing Seminar. It's great seminar. It, it's really, really good. Uh, a lot of the guys like to keep their jig colors real simple. And I do, too. I alter my color patterns by choosing uh, trailers. You know, yeah. Like I keep my basic palettes. You know, my browns. Basic palettes on the jig itself. On the jig itself. But the way you modify it is with the jig trailer. With the jig trailer. Wow, that's a good. The jig trailer offers you so many options. When the sun's shining bright, I want some fleck in it. Yeah. Right. That's going to help me. You know, draw a little attention to the bait. Yeah. Uh, I can go with the purples. I can make a brown and purple jig really purple with a purple trailer. Yeah. To capitalize on that flash. Yeah. You know, you you can so you so in other words. Uh, you can buy just a small flambeau tackle box full of jigs and, you know, work with the trailers to change and alter your colors. Great, great comment. You know? Yeah, work with trailers. And, and you know, I want to remind everybody, Jordan Lee mentioned 
using dyes and spike it's i'm a big fan of that too pete mm-hmm. and i think that's a great way on the fly to to modify or change your jig color without having to carry thirty thousand different jigs you know mm-hmm. a little I, I always carry i carry chartreuse i carry orange uh for sure they're the two colors i carry i even carry a few more now i'm carrying a little bit of blue spike it i like that blue stuff and uh it, it's I, I notice a yeah. lot of uh, chartreuse and orange stains on your basket carpet. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. That's that's some of that spike, and that's also hey, other stuff. Oh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Have a drink. That, that's terrible. <laughs> <Ba-doom, doom. laughs> doom, doom. Uh, Brian Carver, what do you got coming in uh, question wise? This is the Q and A. T and A. Prefer like... jig over punch type gear when fishing. Uh, heavy weed with holes the question was uh, mm. prefer a jig or a punch style bait when fishing heavy grass pete good question Boom. you want me to tackle it tackle it you know uh it, it you know it's a difficult question i mean number one it depends on the density of the vegetation that you're fishing it's really difficult to get a jig through some heavy duty hydrilla that's rolled and matted yeah um you almost have to go to punching gear with your heavy bullet style weights um you know with your you know florida screw in lead style weights that we used to use 20 years ago 30 years ago 30 years ago but now that with the tungsten the punch style stuff it's going to be able to get you that um that penetration to that really really heavy stuff the jig is uh, going to be much harder to get through but man there are plenty of plenty of times when when that uh when that jig in that that heavy a matted scenario is is a tremendous tool so you know for me it's it's really about the different types of vegetation and i experiment because sometimes they'll bite the jig better sometimes they'll punt they'll bite that that slick uh profile better so uh, i kind of mix it up i really don't have a rule on which is which but i i come prepared with both i i like both i i can tell you that the the one ounce punch weight i think comes through cleaner but here's a real neat analogy everybody is punching uh, mm-hmm. a, a beaver or a D bomb or you know something like that? Everybody's punching that. Keep that in mind. You get up to a mat; it's already been pummeled by thirty freaking dudes. Yep. If you can get a jig through it, mm-hmm. it's a totally different look. And yep. I think sometimes that makes That's a big difference. A fact. That's a fact. Brian De Carpenter, what else? Would you, got you consider through? a chigger crawl subtle or action? Uh, the question was: Do I consider a chigger crawl subtle or action? Uh, I as I mentioned, right in the middle, right in the middle. To me, a chigger crawl is a moderate action trailer, so it doesn't have as much action as say a double tail grub, but it has more action than say a chunk style trailer. So, for me, a chigger crawl under moderate water temperature, moderate activity of the fish, that's the one I like to go to. Yes. Here's a good one. Uh, this is from Glenn W. I have only been pitching jig for a few months, but I have a major problem. I get plenty of bites, but I'm only able to set the hook on a very small percentage of the fish. I've tried bending the hook out a little. doesn't seem to help much. I usually do not detect the initial bite because I usually have some slack in my line. But I feel the fish when I pull up on the rod. I then try to quickly set the hook, but usually miss the fish. Using a heavy action 7.3 St. Croix Bass X rod, I set the hook hard. Okay, uh, I, I heard a couple things there, Pete. I, yeah. I think there's a, there's a couple key key parts, and that was a great question. Who was that from? That's Glenn W. Glenn W. Uh, great, great questions, and I, I picked up a couple things. I want to tackle a couple that I heard, Pete, which is the first one's on the rod. Uh, you know, a 7.3 heavy, to me, for sure, if you're fishing the heaviest matted, nastiest matted cover you're fishing, that's the right rod. But to me... I like to see you go down in action to a medium heavy. Uh, you, you know, a heavy action rod is more that broomstick action. I, I think, you know, that you want a little bit. You know, when you set the hook on that single big hook, Pete, you want to you want that tip to give just a little bit. So I, I would, the first thing I heard is I would go down to a medium heavy. I like the 7.3, but I would go down to a medium heavy. The other thing I heard is that you're late to the hook set. And we mentioned it earlier when we had Jordan on the phone, but, you know, get in the habit of any time that you feel like something's different, set the hook. And and in the beginning, Pete, a lot of times you're setting the hook on nothing. 
but it's okay. Don't don't be freaked out by that because that's the process of learning that, you know, the bites to me, most of the bites aren't those obvious bites. It's you see your line get a little tight or your line's more slack than it should be. Or you just have like this gut feeling that something's not right. That's when you need to set the hook. Not when you feel the fish because that's too late. But when you have that feeling that something's not right, set the hook. You got to remember, when you get bit, Brian the Carpenter, on a weightless Senko, dude, you can open your bail and wait an hour, and the dudes will shit the bait out. Yep. But with a jig, three-eighths, half-ounce, three-quarter, it's a heavy bait. You know, they get that thing in their mouth after a couple feet, most of the time, not all the time, after a couple feet, swim with it. They're like, shit ain't real. It's heavy. And they spit it out. What I'm picking up from you is you're detecting the bite toward the end when you need to be setting the hook earlier. So trust your gut. If something doesn't look right or feel right, set the hook. Set the hook earlier. Uh, you know, and, and something I want to steer you to, and thanks for subscribing, but go back and watch Gerald's Simple Jig Fishing uh, Seminar. And he addresses this. Um, and one of the things he talks about is – being in a position to set the hook. Yep. Um, a lot of times, guys, when they're jig fishing, their rod is out of position. It's way up here at 12 o'clock. And like he says, only Bill Dance can set the hook in that position. <laughs> but uh, the <laughs> the thing that Gerald does is is he fishes that jig with that rod down in that. Two, three o'clock yeah, rod position right. is right. And I'm, I'm going to go back, and I don't want to steal Gerald's th the thunder, but put that rod butt in your mm -hmm. ribs, Pete. Let that rod butt touch your rib cage. Keep it at that two, three o'clock, and you're in the right position to set the hook. Yeah, and, you want and, that rod in front of you, and you you want to be in somewhat an, of an athletic position where you can move your torso, you can step back, you can gain a you know some extra pressure. One thing that I've done that's really helped my hook setting on this type of application is I get rid of the butt seat, the seat up in the front of the boat, because that allows me to step back and 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 get a, a couple extra feet, move more yeah. line. It Agreed. helps helps me catch a lot more fish. But get that rod down, you know, a little bit. I think, it, it you know, it might help you get a lot more of those fish. By the way, if anybody's watching or listening tonight and you have an extra new butt seat that's not ripped, Brian the Carpenter is looking for one <laughs> for his new boat. But that's a great question. I think that, that, that man wins the prize. Is that Glenn? Oh, yeah, I'm waiting on Glenn's contact. Glenn, send your contact info through. You just won a prize, Pete, tonight. I think, That's awesome. I think we should give another three months away. Another three months. There That's you go. Outstanding. Very good. Any advice for fishing from the bank with a jig? And I think, hmm. I think, I mean, it's actually it's kind of tough. You know what I mean? It's more of a dragon deal. Not really. It's uh, yeah. It's not easy I, to I, fish cover with yeah. a jig. You're, you're working uphill, yeah. which makes it a little bit challenging to, to fish from the bank uh, with a jig. But, you know, nonetheless, I mean, uh, you know, it's still it's still a very, very effective way to go. One of the things that you're going to be faced with is a lot of the habitat that you're going to be throwing that jig into, like trees that are falling into the water. You're coming right into the crotch of those branches. And it's, you know, it's going to be difficult to get the jig through there. So you want to, you know, pay, pay special attention to a good wood jig. A lot of times, a lighter jig, lighter jig is 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 effect is more effective because quarter three eighths. It yeah. can it can help get you through that habitat. The heavier jigs will really bury you up, and uh, you know cause you to break off and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I do want to say this though. D don't get discouraged if you're bank fishing with a jig. If you you know you don't have a kayak, you don't mm -hmm. have a jumbo, you don't have a boat. Don't get discouraged. Because I got to tell you, Pete, and you know I've preached this for years. A jig is one of the best transmission lures out there. And what I mean by that is you cast that jig out there, even if you don't see stuff. You know, obviously you're going to throw it a cover. You see a tree, you see a shopping cart, you're going to throw it to it. But, dude, a jig is a great lure to learn the bottom, mm -hmm. right? Guy fishing on the bank doesn't have a depth finder. He doesn't have a, a you know, a Lowrance, a Hummingbird. But you can feel around. And I, Brian the Carpenter, how many times have you thrown that jig out there and you felt something creeping it along, and you found a submerged piece of something, juice. Bank guys, that's a great thing to do with the jig, mm -hmm. is you're using it to learn the bottom. Yep, right. Big time. It's key shit. It's a fact. It's key. Yeah. Don't be intimidated by it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Yeah. Brian, what do you got? Glenn, send me your dang info. Glenn, send your info through. 
Thank you. Let me remind everybody watching, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to subscribe, we encourage it. We <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got That's one. a nice reminder. <laughs> All right. Do you spread the weed, the weed guards out on your jig side to side or oh. weave them straight and only trim them? Wow. I just happened to bring a jig. Bro, should I come to the back to do this? Cause I did, I wanted to do a jig modification live tonight. Oh yeah. Would it be better to come back and do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do okay, that. I'm coming back. Pete, can I talk about it while I come back and do this? All right. Uh, you know, uh, th this is a key thing that, um, you know, is, is important as far yeah, as send your contact. how to modify your jig with the with the weed guard. Mike's going to get back there and show you how he does it. Uh, you know, the, the key here, you know, for me is is you want to you wanna have a weed guard that effectively helps you get through the habitat but is not so rigid that it inhibits you being able to set the hook. So, you know, from that perspective, that that's kind of how I, I look at, you know, what I do with my weed guards. A lot of times I, you know, if I'm in really, really heavy habitat and I don't know how you do Mike, but I keep my weed, weed guard as stiff and intact as possible. Uh, cause it can sometimes help me get through the cover. But when it comes to catching fish, there's no doubt there's some modifications that can help you catch and land a few more fish. So, um, are you set up back there, Mike? I'm ready. ready I'm go? ready. Yeah, and I've got, uh, real quick, this is a great question. I was prepared for this night. I was hoping somebody would ask it. I have, this is a, a three-quarter ounce missile jig head banger with the skirt off, so I can show you a little bit how to do this. And, Pete, you mentioned it. Think about the cover you're fishing. The lighter the cover, the more you want it thin. The heavier the cover, the more you want to leave that, that guard thicker. But my normal routine is to take that that jig and i'm going to do two things with it i'm going to trim the length of that guard and i'm actually going to thin out that guard and where i like that guard is it is a good way to describe it is i like that the guard to measure to the tip of the point and i'll, I'll take it and i'll just kind of measure it and then i'll use my thumbnail to get that mark and I'm actually going to take a little bit of length off. That's about an, an eighth of an inch of length off of that guard. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it side to side, just like he mentioned. And then, Pete, my guesstimate on the correct amount under moderate, normal fishing conditions is I like to take about a third of that guard out. And I'll, I'll pull a third of that guard out with my index finger and my thumb and I actually cut a third of that guard three quarters of the way back so I totally get rid of that and that to me under normal conditions normal cover conditions is perfect I thinned it out a little bit and I get a much better hookup percentage so uh, just just that's what I do uh, you know again that's a, just a general uh, modification I do on all my jig heads straight out of the pack good question Give that man a prize, BTC. Give that man a prize, man. But no, yeah, we're prize. working with that with that weed guard is key. You know, there's there's no doubt that uh, you know there's a there's a lot of different modifications that you can do. But that's that's the key. You know, you want to weigh that balance of getting through the habitat versus increasing your strike to catch ratio. Uh, so that's what you, what you want to think about when you're trimming up your weed guard. Um, and there's other modifications to the jig as far as trimming the skirt and you know, I, you know, I'll address that, uh, you know, which I think is key because the skirt is, uh, on various jigs has various lengths. We've seen the, the mop jig, which has, mop! A, has a skirt that's, that's literally down here. And, uh, what, what, what the thing you want to, uh, what I like to key on is the moving parts of the trailer, right? Especially if you're dealing with swimming tail trailers, um, you know, pocket chunks or anything that's moving. It, if the skirt is so long that it's laying over the claws or the swimming, the moving parts of the trailer, I like to trim that jig skirt um, to uh, up short of where the moving parts are so that they don't lay on them and reduce the action of your trailer. Um, and that's, that's my general rule of thumb on how I, how I trim a skirt. Uh, you know, certain times, I trim a skirt, nothing to do with the action of the jig, but the what I'm trying to accomplish, which is trying to make a small profile jig. If I have a, 
a jig where I'm trying, you know, in the forage and the crawfish I notice are small, I'm going to want to trim that that skirt up real, real tight. And, and I'll thread a short trailer up on the shank of the jig, making a very, very small profile jig. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things you can do to make your jig bigger. You can make it smaller. There's a tremendous amount of modifications that you can do with the jig, uh, which is one of the reasons, you know, it's one of the most versatile baits that there is out there in the world of fishing. And it wins a lot of tournaments. Wins a ton. Heavy, heavy, heavy versatility, Brian DeCrepter. Uh, we have a caller. Caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Mike Reed, and I'm from uh, Ohio. Mike, how you doing tonight? <laughs> what's up, buddy? Good to hear from you. Hey, man. Hey, hey, hey got a question for you guys. Okay. Hey, um, what's the biggest jig fish you ever caught? And then is it your personal best? Mm, wow. Pete, you start. Man, you know, I... I, I I, I'm, I'm, I got to go through my memory banks, and, and uh, I tell you, one of the coolest big jig fish that I caught was down near your part of the woods in Lake Russell in a Bassmaster Top 100 where I caught the lunker of the tournament on a jig, and it was a seven-pounder, Wow, uh, which was big fish in that particular tournament. But my personal bests are over 10 pounds, but I've, uh, th- those were caught on uh, things other than a jig. Wow. Uh, I'm, I, mine's easy. Mine, uh, my biggest fish on a jig was 1213 i caught it on the first day of the second bassmaster elite event at lake amistad uh second time we were there and uh it, it was not my personal best but it was my second pb that's, that's pretty good one. caught on jake caught on a football head out of 40 foot of water one ounce football head what yes how about that one 40 feet that's a biggie fishing in 60 the fish hitting 40 how about that that's that's wow. that's a nice. How about you, Mike? What's what's your PB and uh, was that on a jig? So so my personal best is a twelve two. Mm. Uh, uh, that was in the Ashley River in South Carolina. That was actually on a uh, on a uh, lizard. I uh, believe it or not, on a shaky head. And uh, but my personal jig fish is a eight two uh, in a uh, Bassmaster Weekend Series. Time. Wow! No kidding. During the tournament. Yeah. Wow. Where where was that and what time of the year? Uh, that was at Lake Sinclair in Georgia, and that was in a, there was a March tournament. Wow. That's a big, that's a big one. Early March. That's yeah. a toad, bro. That's a, that's a pre-spawn giant. Yeah, she was a piggy. Wow. So are, so are you fishing up in Ohio right now? Uh, heck no. Um, I think it was one this morning. I think the high was 12. <laughs> so, uh, Yuck. My experience outside today was uh, going getting firewood. Ugh. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Too cold. Hey, man, well, we're, we're really looking for Mike's, – Mike's one of, one of us. He, he works with us at Bash University. And uh, I'm looking forward to catching up with you this year, Mike. You're going to be at uh, the, the ones in Indiana this year? Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and, and more if I can. Excellent. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, look forward to seeing you over there, Mike. Awesome. Hey, well, well, you, Mary, hey, you gotta take care. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Yeah, absolutely, Happy New Year. We'll see you, Mike. Merry Christmas, buddy. Mike's a good dude. Yeah, Mike's Mike's the best. First class, man. He's good. Okay. And he's a great angler. Hell of an angler, you know. Yeah, I mean, just Justin, our very own Justin Kimball has a good good eye for great anglers. Mm-hmm. Justin considers him a great angler. Yeah. I, I would. That's I, and, a compliment. Well, I would agree with it, Mike. I Mike, would too. Mike's. Uh, he's been competitive in some really big tournaments, some top tens. Yeah. In uh, I don't. I don't know if it's open or coast is, but he's he's had some pretty powerful finishes yeah. with some pretty stout competition. That's and, awesome. From Alabama, and uh, you know, fishes well down there, or maybe Georgia. I don't know exactly, but he's fished that part of the country. All right, Pete. We're winding down. I think we got a little little under ten minutes left. I want to go ahead and throw out another trivia question, Brian the Carpenter. This is the big one. This is the big one. Okay, and here it goes. And this is for you. Want to hold that up, Pete? This is for the We Go. It's, it's not, amazing. It's, it's not a lunchbox. It's not a lunchbox. Amazing. And here's this is the question. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, and it goes like this. What lake did Steve Kennedy flip and swim a white three-quarter ounce jig to victory? 
What lake did Steve Kennedy flip and swim a three-quarter ounce white jig to victory in the 2017 Elite Series, Pete? We want to know that. We Excellent. want to know that. And the winner is going to get a Wego charging system. Weighs about a pound and a half. Put it in your boat. Put it in your car. It'll jump start your outboard. It'll get you back in safe in a tournament. Get you back in safe if you're out with your family and get your car jumped. And you can also, you know what else you can do? What can you do? Put it on your nipples? You can. Well, some might like that. The uh, <laughs> you got a USB, you got a USB connection system oh, there. Phone, cell charge your deal. phone. Your phone's Very dead cool. out yeah. on the water. You can charge it right there. It's got an emergency uh, lighting system that uh, you know you can use to signal for help. Yeah. Uh, it's a great, great little charging system. It's mandatory for everybody's boat, for everybody's it. car. You gotta have it. And you own a boat or a car, yeah. you're gonna need to have this product. It's about hundred fifty dollar value. We're gonna be giving it away to the winner of the Steve Kennedy yes. question. Yes. What lake? And we have a winner. Oh, we have a winner. Brian right. Carpenter, what do we got? We've got Lake Dardanelle. Lake Dardanelle's yeah. correct. Yeah, correct, Lake Dardanelle. And uh, Brian, who's the winner? Matt V. Matt V, you are the winner. Send through your information, and we won't post it through to everybody else. Probably. And you are the winner of the WeGo product. Congratulations. And thank you for subscribing to thank Bash University TV. Awesome. And why does Steve Kennedy always throw a three-quarter ounce jig? Does Dude, he throw I, any I, I, man, I actually had a conversation with him about it. Is that know? right? And he was so, you know, so Steve Kennedy. If you know Steve, he's just so, like, you know, like matter of fact, you know. Yeah. He's like, whoa, you know. <laughs> but uh, a lot of it had to do, and th this is the, the part of it that I took on this and and i like it is with those bigger jigs whether it was the seven eights he talked about a seven eight he talked about a three quarter he talked about some more unusual bigger sizes he had a lot of control pete and he was all about the ability to control a heavier jig better and to do a lot of things with it right so you know he talked about the lake darnell tournament the classic where he he came in second his ability to go down any given stretch and swim it high with a fast retrieve and his rod tip up or to slow roll it low with a slow swimming retrieve or to actually punch it and flip it into bushes. And that heavier jig gave him ability to have control with the jig. That's the that's the one smart thing I took from him. Oh, you know. <laughs> the one smart thing. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you alluding that there were some no, things no, other than I'm smart? No, I'm just that saying were... you got to decipher. <laughs> you, there's a little bit of stuff you got to peel away from yep. what he says. Oh, he's a half a genius. Though. He's a yeah. genius. He's an absolute genius. Uh, I got some but breaking gotta news. Peel. Okay. Uh, Noah from Real Snot wants to give away a Real Snot tournament jersey, a hat, a snot rag, bag, and a bottle of Ike approved snot wow big real snot package yep. okay yep we're awesome no, all right we're going to give that away in a second here we'll give that away to another do we have trivia another question trivia question on there we do let's let's just do it right now you want to do it right now yeah 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 okay here it goes brian de carpenter this right. is for the real snot let's call this a grand prize package pete mm -hmm. brian once again it's a bottle of real snot it's a tournament jersey it's a snot rag what else was it a hat yeah Look, uh, bar soap and bar soap, a container of milk. And, and a, a half gallon of milk. Um, uh, yeah, real snot, uh, jersey, hat, snot rag. Yes. And milk. Okay, real snot prize package, grand prize package. What style, and we talked about this tonight, Pete, if they're paying attention. What style jig head does Gerald Swindle say is his favorite on Bash University TV? There you have it. What style jig head? What style jig head? Does G say is the deal on his Bash University TV? Uh, I know the answer to that seminar. question. Okay. Winner of that will get a uh, real snot prize package, grand prize package. Good one. Uh, Pete, let, let's real quick, uh, I know we're, we're winding down to the end here, but let's remind everybody watching and listening. First of all, thank you for joining in tonight. Hope you learned a lot. Uh, hope everybody had a great holiday and a Merry Christmas. I uh, want to remind everybody, Pete, if they're watching tonight and they're amazed and they're very – uh, happy about the information, <laughs> secrets, tips, a lot of them tonight. And again, I want to want to let everybody know this is just a tidbit. This is just a little tip of the iceberg on what they can get. They're not a subscriber. What should they do right now? They want to subscribe. How can they do it, man? Go check it out. Go check it out at bashu.tv. Subscribe. Um, we'll we'll throw you a hat. We'll throw you a holiday gift card. That offer's good till 
December 31st. Uh, so take advantage of that. Just come over and check it out. Uh, I, you know, I really think it, you're going to like it. It's going to help you. I mean, you know, Mike, you and I have been doing this for a long time. And every single seminar that I watch, I pick up a tip. Continually learning. Never stop learning. Man. It's always Never something. Stop. It's always some subtle detail for me that I didn't think of or I want to, you know, apply to a particular application that truly helps me as an angler. And and I would consider myself, you know, a veteran. Somebody has been doing this for 25 years or more. And, um, and you know, for the guys that are new and, and just getting into the sport, there's an there's an endless volume of information that's going to help you shorten your learning curve and and get you out there get you consistently catching fish or get you consistently you know contending to win tournaments um, our students have qualified for the bassmaster elites they have, um, they have uh, won tournaments uh, you know and and there's a lot of guys that don't or that aren't interested in that and they just want to be consistent they don't they want to get to a body of water and not feel lost. They want to feel like they have a strategy, a plan of attack, and and that's what we deliver at Bass University TV. It, it's awesome, and uh, you know, here's here's a big fact for me, and I want to announce this, Pete. We've got new content launching, not once a month, new content launching every freaking week. Week, Pete. Yep. Every week we have new content launching. Over three hundred and fifty seminars in our database, and ca and continuing to grow that. It's amazing, and you know you got to check this out. Uh, we we have some great Bobby Lane. Now the guys in Florida are already starting to fish. It, Did you it, say Bobby Lane? <laughs> fishing is is starting down there in, in the southern parts of Florida, and Bobby Lane talks about his strategies for frogging and flipping that have got him elite tournament wins, that have gotten him FLW tournament wins, and um, you know he he lives down that area. He's he's a expert and. Uh, to, and I'm I I can't wait to view all Bobby Lane's stuff. I, I'm excited about. I'm, it. I'm going to be spending a lot of time with it. I'm coming down to Florida myself for fish one of the Bass Opens here in uh, in short term, and uh, I'm going to be looking at that kind of stuff. But that is what we do every week. We launch the information, the the content that that applies to what's going on in the world of fishing right now. So you know that's what you're going to see throughout the year. If you're stuck with cabin fever, no better time. To catch up on your bass fishing IQ. That's right. Brian Carpenter, we have a winner, I'm assuming. Round ball head Jago's answer, and the winner is Crawfish Bandit is the winner of the Gerald Swindle question. Thank you, Crawfish Bandit. Yes, yeah, send your information through. You got the real snot grand prize package. Very awesome. Pete, while we have everybody's attention, real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got a caller. Well, let's take it. A uh, caller, what's your name? Where are you call from? Hello. Hi there, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Bob, and I'm calling from upstate New York around Cayuga Lake. Hey, Bob. Yeah. How you doing tonight, man? Cayuga. We Hi. love that lake. What's your, what's your question? Oh, yeah. Bob? It's a pretty good lake. It's an awesome lake. What's your question, Bob? I understand for next year that uh, you cannot use uh, penetrating clips. That's correct. It, there are a number of companies that have come out, uh, TH Marine, Eckerd Call, and there's probably a few others. And I tried one of them, and they were terrible. Uh, I'm wondering if you guys have decided on what brand you guys are going to use, and have you used them yet? That's a great question, Bob. And, and you know, I, I like this rule. You know, we, we actually talked a little bit about it on Nike Live, I think, a, a show or two ago, and... There's mixed opinions on it, but for me, I like it. I like uh, conservation. I like, uh, you know, not hurting the fish. You know, th this is this is going to go, I think, a long way to keep people thinking about taking care of fish, keeping fish healthy and alive. So I like the concept of it. Uh, you know, for me, last season, not, not this past season, but the season before, which was 2016, we had an event on the Potomac River, Pete, if you remember, and in that event, we we had to use non-penetrating clips because of the Maryland rule, Pete. And okay. and uh, I used the TH clips on that one, and I liked them a lot. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and use. I'm going to be using the TH clips this coming season. I know there's a couple other uh, manufacturers. Have you had experience with any of the brands? Pete? You know, I've used the TH as well, and uh, you know, I'm I'm an advocate of those clips. I have not. You know, they're it's so new to me. 
and and with the sport that I haven't had a chance to get around yeah. and look at the the various types out there. Yeah. But uh, I with you, I love the concept. Love the concept. I mean the you know treating the our cats is you know caring for our cats. I think is absolutely key. I think this is a big step. And, uh, you know, I think we all need to get on board with using them. Uh, but for right now, uh, you know, I'm planning on using TH this year. Yeah. Hey, by the way, do you guys, are you guys iced up up there? All the lakes hard right now? Well, I don't tell you, it was about minus five, you know, the, the last two this morning. So it's not going to take long. Uh, the north end of Cayuga right now is uh, starting to uh, ice over. Yeah. And it won't take long because the weather forecast, uh, of what I heard tonight, it's, uh, it's going to be till the middle of January before we get any kind of, uh, relief. And, uh, yeah. it won't take long for the weather to ice up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cold. It's cold here too, Pete. Man, you know, I, I love Cayuga. It's one of my favorites. And I've never been up there during ice out. Uh, is it's got to be an amazing jerk bait. It's got to be an amazing lake to fish when the ice starts to melt. Yeah, all you got to do is keep the damn picker off. Is that? Oh. Uh, okay. $30 yeah. mega bass baits just <laughs> gone away, Pete, yeah. like that, bro. It's yeah, it's, uh, it's 10 pickers for one bass. And on, unfortunately, the bass could be a five-pounder. Uh, right, you. right. It might be worth 100 bucks in jerk baits to get a five-pounder. Yeah. But hey. you just... Uh, Mike, you fished uh, Cayuga way, way back when it was the old Redman, what, didn't you? I did, I did. I started fishing it in, the uh, I think, 93 was the first year I yeah. fished it, and I fished a lot of Redmans there through the 90s. Learned a lot on that lake, man. I, I can't tell you, you know, uh, some of the partners I drew there learned a lot from them, learned a lot about fishing weeds in that lake, you know, that, that 10 to 12 foot weed line. The north end of the lake learned a lot about smallmouth in the middle of the lake. Uh, man, I, I I owe a lot to that lake. It it really helped me become a better fisherman. It's a good lake. It's a it, it is a better river. It's uh, people take good care of it. Yeah, it's awesome. But, uh, well, I want to wish you a, a lot of luck this coming year. Thank you, thank you. Hey, and uh, have a great new year coming up, and happy holidays. I will. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Bye. Have a good one. Thanks for the call, Pete. I was going to add. Um, uh, to to that real quick, um, and and Brian the carpenter's not half paying attention, but um, <laughs> Brian came up with a, a new system instead of those cold clips. He's actually just going to paint the fish to mark them. He's going to use just paint. Yeah, I just, just wanna, paint on the fish, yeah, and the, then there's no attaching anything. That's to a it. great point. You just paint the damn fish. Paint the damn fish. You have pink ones and blue ones and green Smack ones. Him real matter. quick. Just paint the damn fish. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, let me remind everybody. Thank you for yeah, watching tonight, Pete. I, 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 I know. I want to go over this. <laughs> this is pretty. This is pretty immense. Uh, I want to let everybody know before we skedaddle here. We've got four classes officially on the book. So excited about it! January thirteenth and fourteenth, Kokomo, Indiana. I'm going to see you there along with Mark Zona, Scott Suggs, John Cruz, Bill Lowe, and Cliff Cochet. January twentieth and twenty-first, brand new location, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Ohio folks, come out and see us. Ott Defoe, Mike McClellan, Jamie Hartman, Skeet Reese, Brandon Polinick, and John Murray. Pete, two more. What else we got? Uh, well, we're going to be in Tulsa again this year, one of our favorites. Uh, Jordan Lee, classic champ. Uh, Boom Boom's going to be there. James Elam, Jason Christie, John Cruz, and Jeff Crete's going to be with us wow. this year. And our final uh, on-site event is going to be down in Gatson, Alabama. Wow. On the banks of Neely Henry. Uh, come on down. We're going to have Aaron Martins, uh, just the phenom, and Justin Lucas, uh, Matt Heron, Chris Zaldane. I'm going to be there, and we have one more major speaker we're going to be announcing very, very soon. Wow. Uh, you can look for that uh, on our Facebook page, on Instagram and Twitter, and as well as we'll be putting all that information on our website. Wow. So check that out. You want to buy a ticket? Go to thebashuniversity.com. And you know what? Probably we got a, we got a stocking stuffer gift pack that's still in effect till December 31st. For all you guys that buy a ticket between now and December 31st, midnight Pacific time, we're gonna give you a pack full of Rapala lures and autographed cars and all kinds of great stuff. Brian Carver, what do you got before I, we head out? Yeah, I just have to. I want to address the message board. Guys. Address, yeah, please, guys. Great job tonight. Great um, job tonight. The it's message good. board was alive, and um, as far as the contests go. 
the questions come in time stamp i do my best to do like that 40 questions and i have to go through them all i see them all and then i send them through i send them through in time i see who answered first so a lot of guys just you know by the time I send my answer through, they're yeah. like, oh, takes there's time. a big, there's mm -hmm. a big yeah, lag. Take, takes time. I'm, Hold on, guys. No, I, yeah. I got it. It's all good. Ain't nobody getting jocked. Okay. Nope. Nobody, nobody's but, getting uh, jocked. Thanks for hanging with us tonight. All yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll, yeah. Thank you. A special shout out to Jordan Lee. Uh, thank you, Jordan, for joining us tonight. Shout out to Brian the Carpenter. For, uh, for doing double duty. For, double duty out. tonight. Being Eric the intern. We should have made you put a dress on like Eric. Tonight. That would have been <laughs> good. Uh, Pete, shout out to you. Good job tonight. Wish you, wish you a happy holiday. Yep. You happy too. New Year coming happy up. New Year. Thank you very it's gonna much. Going to be a big year, 2018. Going to be a huge year. And uh, let me, real quick before we go, Bry, yep. let me let everybody know yep. I made an announcement a few shows ago about an announcement. And I want to make an <laughs> announcement tonight that that announcement about the announcement that I made the announcement about is going to happen it's gonna be announced. in the January <laughs> show of Ike Live, January 14th. Uh, it's a couple weeks, January 15th. Is it 15, 15th now, I think? I think we switched to Monday. Big announcement about the announcement, about an announcement that I announced a few months ago. So hang in there with me, and there's going to be a really big announcement coming up. <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks for tuning in tonight to Bash You Live. Head over to bashu.tv and subscribe. Come on, join the party, guys. Join the party. Appreciate you. Have a great night. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Peace. <laughs> Brian.